Catherine Magbanu is facing a first-degree murder charge for the slaying of Professor Dan Markell. Police say Markell was gunned down in his Tallahassee driveway in 2014 as part of an elaborate murder-for-hire plot orchestrated by the wealthy family of his ex-wife, Wendy Adelson. The motive for the alleged hit? Officials believe the Adelsons were desperate for Wendy and her two children to move closer to them in South Florida, and Dan Markell was standing in the way. Trials for the two alleged hitmen are scheduled to start in the coming weeks. Both have pleaded not guilty, but we've learned that authorities are trying desperately to flip them, hoping they'll testify against the Adelsons. This video contains an interview of Catherine Magbuana, who helped her boyfriend orchestrate a murder. In 2013, Catherine Magbuana was a single mother struggling to make ends meet. She had recently broken up with the father of her children, Sigfredo Garcia. During the summer, she found work at a local dental office, where she met Charlie Alderson, the son of a well-to-do family in the dental business. Within months, the two began dating, and Alderson soon began to confide that his sister, Wendy Adelson, was having problems with her ex-husband, Dan Markle. Charlie Adelson had always hated his brother-in-law, and when the divorce became hostile, he no longer felt he had to restrain himself for his sister's sake. Wendy Adelson and Dan Markell's main fight was over the custody of their two young boys, and the Adelson family was strongly opposed to Markell having any rights. At the urging of his mother, Donna Adelson, Charlie began to look for someone to take care of the problem. This person turned out to be Sigfredo Garcia, and Adelson coordinated his plans through Maguana, who had reached out to Garcia. Joining Garcia was Luis Rivera, a longtime friend who was often at Garcia's side. On the morning of July 18, 2014, Garcia and Rivera drove by Markel's home and shot him in his driveway after several trips to learn his schedule. Markel later died at the hospital. The Adelson family was immediately suspected, but no arrests were made until 2016.
before, like, I know, like, you know, obviously, you know, I'm going through two trials and everything. Like, what would this be all public now? Like, this, or it's just for protection? Eventually, it will be. We're doing this because, obviously, with the publicity of the trial and the amount of, you know, you guys didn't do this, you guys talked to her before you turned the camera on. We're not going to, we just don't, we don't want to have any of those games played. We would rather have everything, uh, you know, recorded and documented so there isn't, you guys sat down with Katie and told her what she needed to tell you. Magbona is concerned about keeping some of the details private, but that is no longer an option. The case has gained too much public attention for secrets, and everything is going to come out. This is my first time sitting down and being able to talk to you, yeah. so we want everything, you know, recorded, so there's no question about, like it did last time, people were making allegations that we fed people and things like that. We're on the up and up. This is not, you know, this way it's been the whole we're time. Not here we're not to here to trick you, trick you, berate you, do, like, this is, the, 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 this is different. It's gotten to this point, basically. This is your side of the story. Yeah. This, you tell us the truth of what happened, and, and, and the last question is we start to but it's yeah. Let's do this. For <laughs> when you raise your right hand, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. Now we got that. Out of the way. Okay. And all the confusion. Um, yeah. I mean, really, it's best to start with. I think how you met Charlie would be the best way to start, and then we can probably sequentially, you know, work a timeline out from there. Okay. Um, well, I was working in Sophie Dental. And then he's like one of the specialists that came in. So then from there, he's, you know, like we get the phone numbers from the doctors, from what I remember, and then we put it on our cell phone. So then whenever scheduling purposes, we'll, you know, be in contact or text. To Charlie Adelson was a dentist who got his start in his family's practice. He was the link between the family and the other conspirators who were involved in Merkel's murder. The, the, any of the doctors, any of the dentists. Okay. So I, there. And just started texting, and then yeah, you started dating, obviously. Yeah. Okay. How long? I guess how long did that progression take from the texting to the dating? Like, how did it evolve? Like from being a doctor. Well, this is like all the way from 2013, I believe. So, um, well, yeah, he was like persistent. He was just persistent about like, and I told him I was like, I have kids, like I don't really have time. I don't have a babysitter. I don't have like a chance to just go up and about. Like I don't have that type of freedom. Like, so little by little, he was just you know trying to oh come on let's hang out, and then um, like one day like I just went over to his house. Time frame, I guess, would be late 2013, early 2014. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah 2013. Okay. And you got it, kind of grew from there and became more of a more of a dating relationship, I guess. Yeah. Okay. How long would you say you two dated? Um, like I said, like you know, I've always said that we never had like, oh, he's my boyfriend, I'm his girlfriend, I think. Uh, probably from 2013 to 2014, 15. Okay. I don't remember. Because we've stayed, yeah, like we've stayed friends the okay. whole time. Okay. Um. Listen, Barbie. Sorry, it's just, you know, it's just like not, I haven't spoken to anybody, you know what I mean? And, and that's what we really, I know what we're seeing over here on the side, and it's intimidating, like, this is kind of a, and I'm sure that's not helping the matter. Yeah. Um, but, just try to talk with us. Just okay. literally, just, just sit there and talk with us. Like it out, I mean. Like like yeah, out. yeah, maybe we can move it out a little closer to the camera, the phone, so it's not, like, straight in your face, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Try to block it out and just let's let's talk this through. So you guys started dating. Um, what comes? To, <laughs> Sorry, what, I don't know. What comes to your mind? I, I, what I don't want to do is feed it to you and, right. and you, you know, reiterate it for us. Well, let's just talk about what he what problems did he talk to you about? Did he did he talk to you about his problems and issues and what? And, and this is what I was like scared of, like you know, um, from the. 
from the information that I got from the trial, and then obviously, you know, when I go back in my bunk and I'm like trying to think back, like, you, it's like it's all perception. That's why I was like so irritated and frustrated because as I'm seeing things being revealed, you know, I'm thinking back at the time and I'm just like trying to put things together like, okay, was this happening when this was happening? And then it's like all getting jumbled in my head. Okay. And I don't want to give any... That's fine. Yeah. You're worried about your timelines. Time You're worried about... Don't, time don't worry about that. What? We what? can work timelines out. We can work timelines out with some other information that we have throughout this case. There's a lot like you saw. Yes. There's a whole lot of evidence in this case. Yes. If you can give us the events that occurred, we can work out the timeline. So if you remember a conversation Charlie having with you, I'll work on the timeline of when that occurred. Tell us what conversation you had. I don't want to say the like I don't want to say the wrong thing either. Well, here, like, you I can't say the wrong thing. Make sure that um, you know, just the timeline is not the most important issue at this point. For now, the detectives are more interested in the subject of the conversations. The biggest thing is, is because you keep thinking about everything you saw on trial. Take that out. We want to go by just by your memory. I, I know it's hard. Yeah. Yep. We're going by just your memory. Anything in trial, like he's saying, the timelines, things that we have now, we can we can see how that fits in and, and figure that out later. We're going to want to go from your memory and what you were thinking and your experience, your personal experience with this, how it progressed in that stance. Not taking all the stuff that you saw in trial, all the things that now make you think of it differently. Yeah. You want to know about how, how you thought about it at the time that it happened and how it progressed that way in your own experience. Not by all the stuff you saw. So that yeah. should make it easier. So you just work on that and then we can worry about the timeline afterwards. Let's just get through the how you your experience of it when it was happening. If you were telling us the truth and what you remember, Katie, before any of this nonsense, yes. that's all we're looking for. Okay. We will ask the questions to clarify things. You tell us what you remember that led up to this situation. Okay, okay. So, basically, I mean, like, what led up to the situation? Um, when I was talking to Chris, I was like, you, just like things that are popping up as, as it went. And a particular day that I was thinking about was Halloween in, um, in Lincoln Road when he did mention, but I don't rem I, I don't want to quote anything and I don't want to say anything wrong, like I said, and I just remember him, like, that's the thing, it's like as he's saying things, and like y'all know that Charlie talks a lot, so he's saying things and it's just we're going in circles, I'm not like in Vested into the conversation, like how he's thinking of the conversation. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, like going basically with the flow. So, um, I remember him that he did mention something about I don't know if his sister was going through through it or he, his sister was having a hard time with somebody. He never mentioned. Charlie's sister is Wendy Adelson, Merkel's ex-wife. At the time, they were going through a bitter divorce. I recently released another highly intense video on my Patreon, an explosive altercation between two cops where tension escalated so quickly, resulting in a drawn gun and a devastating gunshot. In a mere 26 seconds, witness the events unfold as two officers engage in a fight that turns deadly. Watch this video and more at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. Um, Dan Markell didn't tell me any names or anything, but that was a specific particular day, I guess, that I thought back and I didn't even really think about it until like when all of it was like over. And I was like, Chris, I don't like, I don't know why it's like coming to me now. Like I've said, like I blocked off a lot of things. I don't remember things. Like you can see in my second trial, I was foggy with everything. Like, and, and those are, those are obstacles we'll all overcome. Okay. We got to overcome them just like you do. I understand you testified and you said things and, and we'll deal with it. Okay. We understand. Um, and that's, Chris will sit down with you, I'm sure, and, you know, and that will come, but just like you just did, you had a conversation, it was around Halloween, what's Lincoln Road? I'm, I'm black. Uh, that was, in Lincoln Road, this is South Beach, so there's like a Halloween, like, party where they block off, like, the whole, okay. like, okay. It's like a party kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, but it's like a bunch of, like, it's outside, you know, they always like, host that event, and I remember when I in a parking lot or like it was like an outside parking lot and that's the first time he's mentioned it and mind you this was 2013 this is like in the beginning so yeah. I didn't think yeah, much of it like this is I just literally met him like this is one of probably 
uh, an event that I can only pinpoint it because it was a specific, like a particular event. No, I'm sorry. Understood. But you don't specifically what he said. You don't remember. Not he remember. just mentioned saying his sister was going through something. Yeah. And you didn't really, you didn't pay attention to. It. Yeah. Okay. So that's October, end of October, first of November of 2013. We're still working for Sophie Dental, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. A career fairly new in Sophie Dental. Okay. So. so go from there. From there, I don't know what happened or like in between, you know, we started hanging out more. I'm pretty sure every single time, like, you know, he'd either mention, not mention about his sister, but maybe just like family issues, or, but like not specifically, like it's always his sister or whatever. Like, right. he never really went forth with that. Okay. So that was like towards the beginning. And I could just kind of remember, I know I spent New Year's with him. And then from, so like that's already like towards the end of 2013. Okay. And what about after that? What, how did it progress from there? Um, like I said, I don't know like whenever he would mention anything about it, maybe every single time that we just, you know, like we'd hang out, I don't know, specific dates, like I said, but all of that's been like a blur to me, so. When you're saying he's mentioning it, is it like he mentioned his frustration with it, or is he just kind of just talking? Yeah, he's kind of just like talking, like, you know, like before hanging out, watching TV, you um, or like I can kind of tell like you know his uh, like if his mom is calling and he's you know like like they're going through like family issues. He never really told me specifically anything, but you know you kind of like get the phone and you walk away like oh that was my mom like talking to me or whatever like she's stressed out my dad's stressed out stuff like that nothing particular that that I can remember. Of. So fast forward, I guess that's January, early yeah. in the year of 2014. So obviously Dan Marquette was murdered in July of 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and as you saw in trial, Garcia and Rivera made a trip up in June. What can you tell us about that? That, like, I, I don't even remember, I mean, I obviously, like, like you're just telling me to, like, remember from what I remember and not from what I remember from trial. Right. Well, I learned a lot of things from the trial. That's why it's so hard, and I want to say the right, you know, not to say the right thing, but, like, remember from how I remember, you know, my days. But, like, my days are consumed with, like, taking care of my kids. And just, you know, like me going through it was afraid of like you guys, you know, all heard all the conversations and everything. Like just the back and forth. What and led to the two of them making that trip to Tallahassee? Okay. So when I was, um, this is like the hard part because that's the part that I've never spoken of. Mm -hmm. And from what I just remember, I don't know the specific day, but I do know that Charlie had given a paper in an envelope, but he stuck it inside, like, I had, like, a diaper bag that I used to use for Kaylee, but I kind of used that as, like, a weekender bag, and he put it in there. So, uh, he's probably been talking about, like, oh, you know, like, I need somebody to, you know, get beat up or whatever. That's why I'm saying, like, from him, something happening to her husband to, like, obviously murder, that's, like, two different extremes, and... So you're saying leading up to him, but not the diaper bag, he was talking about wanting want to find somebody to beat, her, beat him up? It's like, like he's, you know, little by little, I think he was feeding stuff in my head that he needed this to be done. But me not, be like, I was like, okay, you know, like. Maguana is trying to see if she can put the responsibility for her actions on Charlie, but she is involved too deeply for that to work. I know in hindsight, I should have, like I said, that's why I beat myself up a lot because, you know, like I'm like, you know, I was stupid, like, I wasn't, but that's not what my mind frame was at that time. So it was kind of hard for me, and, and that's what kind of, like, I'm kind of scared of, because it's like, are they going to understand this? Because what I was going through a lot, like, mentally with Sigfredo, too, was, you know, a lot of, like, fighting, and, and so it's like I found comfort in Charlie, because obviously he was the good time, and he was the one, you know, that it's like when I'm with him, it wasn't stressful. 
okay. it led to my whole life being turned upside down. Well, let's talk about this real quick. Um, I know you took the stand, like we talked about a while ago, and you got on the stand and you said you didn't remember things. Yeah. That's in the past. Yeah. We're not worried about what you said on the stand. We're starting clean here. This is a new clean break. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I know. You're fine. You're fine. Just sit over. It's okay. Relax. It's okay. Just relax. Yeah, just listen to me. It's, you're, you're already where you are. Okay? Whatever you tell us now, if you lied about something, if you weren't truthful about something, it doesn't matter at this point. You're not going to get in more trouble for it. Okay? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So now's the time to be totally truthful with us. It's just, to, you know, to come totally clean, tell the whole truth all the way through from the beginning. Because Charlie didn't just slip a letter in without you talking about Sigfredo and getting to that point. That's what we're talking about. Tell us how you got to that point. I understand you don't remember time frames and things like that, and, and Charlie may have done this and done that and kind of led you to that, but how did that happen? You know, what kind of conversation did you have about Sigfredo yeah. with him? And, and, and how did it lead up to that? The whole time, it's like I felt as if Charlie kept planting this seed in my head. Obviously, I now I don't know if like he knew of Sigfredo, like he probably knew of Sigfredo from what, you know, like me venting and saying like, you know, like he's, he's giving me a hard time, like, in that point, but far from like what, like, I mean, like, I know that he's probably know that he's gotten in trouble, like in the past, but Sigfredo's like, since that we've been together, like, we, you know, like I try to keep him on the narrow and stay away from trouble and you know, mm -hmm. like with like family right. life. Right. So that's what like he I mean I this is through time that he's probably just been saying things and I'm just like agreeing with it. Like again, I beat myself up for it because it's like I wasn't paying attention to like things. Like I was being nonchalant about it, you know, and just being like, oh, okay, okay and then like, you know, kinda just then when I'm with Sefredo I'm like relaying stuff to him, but them really not knowing, you know, like obviously even with conversations, it's like I never said like, oh, I'm talking to Tuto or like with him, he doesn't want to hear that I'm talking with Charlie. Right. But at the same time, it's like they both know who I'm talking about. Okay. Or they know. <laughs> so what kind of stuff were you relaying? Right. Without Magbuana, Charlie would have never connected with Garcia and Rivera. He also would not have known that they would be willing to commit murder without Magwana coordinating all the details. Through each other? Yeah. That's where it gets a little blurry because that's through time that we're just... Right. You, you, know, you don't have to say specifics. Just give us a roundabout of summary of what the conversations were about. Because I understand you're not going to remember exactly what you said or exactly what they said, but you know the, co the context of the conversation that you had. That led up to this. Everything that led up to this. Well, like, like many, many times. So he stuffed the symbol of yeah. in your bag. Mm -hmm. How did you know I what mean, to like do with it that? I mean, like, it had information but about. How, but how did you know what to do with it? Because he's been, like, kind of mentioning, you know, like, oh, I need this. I need somebody to take care of this. And, you what? know, I know, like, he, obviously, I'm going to Sigfredo about it. But then, as I'm relating to Sigfredo, I'm not saying, like, I don't really know specifics, that's why. So I'm what just, are you relating to Sigfredo? Yeah. You just said, I don't need someone to take care of this. I know it's hard to talk about, but we, we know what you're talking about, yeah. and we need you to talk about it. It's, it's going to be, I know it's hard to say, what is he saying this is? I need somebody to take care of this. What is this? Oh, the problem with when these, I mean, like, that's, I, he, I don't think he ever mentioned about her husband or whatever, but just somebody that's been... Like, I'm fine with here. I, 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 you're fine with that. That you didn't know that Dan Markell was Wendy's husband. Yes. Fine. Yeah. Cool. What did he tell you? Bro? What did he say? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Move on. We're good with that. Yes. I, that is totally. I understand that you. They didn't have the same last name. Well, this husband and wife. You think? So what was he telling you exactly? It is hard to believe that Magwana wasn't aware of the connection and didn't take more of an interest in the person she was helping to murder. On the other hand. She may have been willing to take the money without asking too many questions. That he needed somebody to go up to. I have, like that's what I'm saying. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, we can understand if you're summarizing. Right. You're summarizing. We don't expect you to remember exact 
conversations, but you know the context, which is right. the actual meat of what the conversation was about. That's what we need from you. Okay. Like the actual. What talk. did he mean? What did he say to you, basically, just in general? That, that he needs somebody to get hurt, but like not to get to that point. From my understanding, was not to get killed, but to maybe like I don't know, if like rough up or beat up or whatever. Okay. At that point. Okay. So I um like but that's what I'm saying. Like I just little by little maybe he's like feeding things in my head, but I can't remember those specifics and I Okay, so then you're really in now to see Fredo. So what are you really in to see Fredo? And I know you're not saying Charlie wants me, you're just talking to Sigfredo about a friend that has this problem. What's, what's the problem you're telling Sigfredo? Just that. What that what is exactly? like somebody like um I'm sorry. Like, I, just, we, like, I, I know. Just, I understand what you're trying, trying to say. To, like, not right. I, we know what you're trying to say, but we need you to say it. We can't say it. Yeah. yeah. Here, here's where I think you are. <laughs> it's hard for you to say. Right. Less. It's more hard for you to say than less of you don't know what to say. I think this is where this agreement that signed into. This is where you have to clear your conscience. This is where you just just say what you're trying to say. Get it out. We can talk about it. We're going to talk to Chris about this. Obviously, there's a lot of conversations to be had after this meeting that we're having a today. A lot of conversations? Not, not with you. Not with you. <laughs> not with you. No. Between the prosecutors. No, and between us. And there's just a lot that has to go on after this. So just, just say it. Just come out with what you're talking. So Charlie's giving you something, and you're giving Garcia something. What, what is it? What's the agreement? What was so Charlie going to do? Yeah, like something needed to be taken care of for him. And for what was his, that? The, for, for Dan Markel. Okay. And what was Charlie getting getting in return? Was he doing anything in return? What was he willing to do? If... Well, yeah, like he would have... Uh, I, like the money-wise, obviously, like, you know, like they would be... Like Charlie's like, oh, they're going to be taken care of. That they're going to be taken care of. Did he ever give you a number? What's the number? No, he didn't give me the number. He didn't give me a specific number for it. He just said, go do this and I'll just give, I'll take care of you? He didn't say how much or anything? No, not to me. Like, he, that's what I'm saying. It's like now, like, you know how you guys were talking about, like, the $100,000 or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, he never said that amount to me. Like, I just know that they're going to be taken care of. Like, he was assuring me that they're going to be taken care of. Obviously... That's nothing to do, you know, like I, that's what I'm saying, like I don't have those facts okay. for... How did he know who was going to take care of it or who he needed to take care of? I mean, I, I figured he knew that I was like going to go to somebody that I trusted and then <laughs> relay that to Sigfredo. Okay, so he knew Sigfredo. I just don't, I, I, that's what I'm, I don't know, that if he knew Sigfredo like that. Did you tell him it was Sigfredo though? No, I never so mentioned that it was, okay. yeah. That's fine. But you told him you would have it taken care of. He used to tell him what I did. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we're jumping around a lot. No. And so we, well, we, the problem is we... I just don't want to go around about round about, like, you we're know... We're trying to get said. directly to it, and that's what we... And, and you can help us with that as well. Just just say it. Sometimes just let it go, you know. Um, the envelope that was in the back, what was it? I never looked at it. He told me, do not touch it, do not open it. That he had, um, he would, as time went, like, you know, I, I think back about the things that he's saying, and then he's like, oh, like, don't, I never keep money in my house. Like, why is he telling me that? Like, now in my head, I'm like, okay, is he telling me that so that he won't get robbed? Like, he won't turn around and he would, he, well, yeah, hindsight, like I'm saying, like, I figured this out later on. Um, you know, he did have that, uh, that safe in his house, but he'd always be like, well, I don't keep money in that, or um, I never saw any, you know, like he's opened it before, but I've never like looked inside and see yeah. anything inside. Um, he, when he, on that paper, which I felt like I had all the information, and obviously I had given that to Sigfredo, but when I gave it to Sigfredo, like, I, I never, like, it was in my bag, and then I had told Sufredo, like, oh, like, the paper's there, like, and he never showed it to me. He took it, and then he left. Like, And this Sifredo, would have been prior to the trip they made up in June? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if he had given me that.
that paper. Did he, and that's fine. Yeah. Did he ever, did Frager ever tell you what was written on? No. Okay. And that's the, the information that I wish I had because that's why that's I was fine. so hesitant don't make it up. to even. Don't make it up. Don't fill in a gap that you don't know the answer to. Okay. I just want to confirm one thing on this. So you told Charlie you had it taken care of. So Charlie didn't know you were going to say Fredo, but he probably assumed is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, but you didn't you didn't tell Fredo it's from Charlie and you didn't tell Charlie you're going to say Fredo. You just told him that you would have it taken care of. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I understood what you were saying. <sighs> yes. So obviously you told him that you had somebody that could do this, or he wouldn't just give it to you and say, hey, just how well, that yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Like through time, you know, he just keeps telling me there's a like, something needed to get taken care of. Obviously, he's never said like, oh, that somebody needed to get killed or anything. He never said that. Okay. Magbana keeps insisting that she doesn't know what Charlie had planned, saying that she knew something was going to happen, but she didn't know exactly what. The setup was too elaborate to be a simple scare tactic. Before we move forward, I want to extend my thanks for watching. This video today has no sponsor, so if you're enjoying it, subscribing helps the channel grow. You can also check out my second channel, Stranger Crimes, after this video. Um, but he, it's like, okay, through time, he's like feeding to me, oh, this needs to be taken care of, this needs to be taken care of. And then one night that I had slept over there, he had put that in my face. He's like, do not open it, Katie, like, do not touch it. Even when I put it inside <clears throat> in the envelope, like I, you, like he's telling me things that he did, you know, like I use gloves, I didn't print it in my computer, like he's telling me, he's like forewarning me, like don't even think, like I guess he didn't think that, you know, like he didn't, he didn't want me to like obviously back me at home or something maybe sure. after, or? Sure. At what point did you tell him you had somebody that can take care of this? If he's feeding you this information for him to print this out and take this stuff, right. yeah, at some point you had to tell him you this had someone to take care of it. What did you tell him to that was like going back again that day that he had asked me um, in Halloween in the parking lot. I was like, oh, okay. You know, obviously the first thing in my head was like, oh, if somebody knew you get beat up, whatever. Like, it's like, Fredo's, you know, like that's but, money for him. So, so Halloween is when you told him. The one that I, you said how did I tell, how did you tell him that you had somebody? <clears throat> you said Halloween. Is that when you told him that you had somebody that could do it? Or? To Charlie, yes. yes. Yeah, I probably suggested I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I know somebody. Okay, so you're saying that was at the Halloween thing? Yes. Okay, so that's it's what we got just over. Stuck, Yeah, it stuck out to okay, me. Okay, that's, that's what I wanted, yeah. that's what I was trying to get a clarification on. Okay. So you told him you had somebody, you just didn't tell him who? Yes. Yeah. And you just left it at that? Yes. And you didn't ask him how much it would he could pay, yeah. how he could take care of, any of that? He just always, what he's always told me is like, oh, they'll be taken care of. Didn't give me an amount, didn't tell me. So what did you, you tell know, Sinfredo to get him to do it? Like I said, I don't know how I told Sinfredo. I probably told him, like, hey, like, you know, you can make some type of money if you take care of this for somebody else. And he's like, okay. But you didn't tell him how much? No. I, don't, I didn't know. You probably never gave you an amount or anything. No, he, he just always said, like, yeah, I guess, stupidly, yeah. I figured... And they can like you know. yeah like it's like I said like you got like I you know I'm the middle person obviously I see everything now like yeah like it was going through me but I know I know <laughs> and like, it's I fine know. you look back now and you feel I'm like you I feel you like, like I, I told, that's what I told Tara I was like yeah. listen like I was manipulated I was used I was you know, and it's like, and I feel stupid because it's like, you guys are even like, you, it down. I know, like even through trial, like you guys, are, it's like, yeah, when I, and I'm being truthful and that, like when I see everything, it's like, of course, everybody's just looking at me like I'm a part of this whole thing. And you, it's, it's hard for me to like, it took time, like, you guys didn't know what I was going through in jail, you didn't know, even with family wise, you know, you met my brother, like, it's. How do you just go about it? Like, okay, I had this whole part in this whole situation, like even conversations with like, that's why I was upset too with the Dolce Vita because it's, once you see it in a different way, you're just, and then you sit back and you're like, I don't remember, like a lot of the things my brain has literally, and I wish like I was, I, I wish you guys would just put something in my head and just extract all this information, but I can't time frame. I, which I know you guys 
can guide me with, but it's like, don't know what was said, I don't know how it went about, I just know, like, what, you know, s certain things, and then from there, like, I'll probably get back in, in the dorm, and then, I mean, like, when I was in county, and I'd be like, oh my god, like, this happened, or this happened, and then after that, it's like, I push it away, I've suppressed so much of, like, the whole situation, and I don't want to waste anybody's time, I know we've gotten to this You're point. You're not wasting our time at all. Magvana switches her story up a little by saying that she has repressed a lot of what happened. This contradicts her earlier claims of not knowing what was going to happen. I just, I want an end to this already, like, it's... Well, this is, this is a way to the end, but like we said, you got to be totally honest with us. Yeah. you got to be truthful. I mean, that's, that's all we're asking you to do. Yeah. To the best of your memory, give us everything you can, you know. I know it's hard to talk about. I know you don't want to admit it. But the, the, there's the little things that's embarrassing. It's yes. not just, it, it's not that, it's just my brain. <clears throat> Like, I don't know how to explain, my brain has, like, blocked a lot of things. So, I, like, even, like, and then I second guess myself, and I thought, like, the, the last thing I want is obviously this, I already know how this goes, and I do not want to say something that did not happen or did not occur, and that's what I'm afraid of. I, like, I don't... Well, that's what I'm explaining to you. We don't expect you to remember exact verbatim conversations, word for word, what you said or what someone else said. Of course. Because you know the context of the conversation, which is like what this conversation was about. Yeah. You know what the conversation was about with you and Charlie. You know what the, the trick or treat <coughs> thing, the Halloween thing, that you that's when you gave Charlie, after he's been venting to you and venting to you, you gave him the thumbs up, like, yes, I got someone who could take care well, of Well, that's the you. first time that he's like kind of mentioned something. You mentioned you trying to get it taken care of. Yeah. But he had been telling you and feeding you up to that about how he's frustrated with his sister's well, stuff. Well, yeah, like little bits and pieces right. like that. And then that was like something that stuck out. And then from there on, all that time frame, that's why I just don't even know like what happened in between. But like I said, I was living my life as a mother, mm -hmm. taking care of my kids. Right. Like, yeah, I should have paid attention, you know, you don't think I beat myself up every day thinking about, like, I should have paid attention, I should have taken this seriously, but in my head at that time, it wasn't, like, a contract. You're thinking you know, someone's like, just going to get beat up. Yes, like, somebody to get hurt. Obviously, that's, like, one thing that, okay, you know, Sigfredo, like, would do. I mean, like, we were financially, like, not, like, he was doing his own thing, and God knows what, like, I don't know, I don't even know why I went to him. To, I don't even know why this whole thing, like, literally, like, occurred. Well, let me ask you It this. just snowballed. So you know, it, and obviously the trial came out, and it was mentioned, I don't know how many times. Charlie made the comment to several people through, throughout the years that, you know, tried hiring a hitman, but a TV was cheaper. Yeah. Had he ever made a comment like that to you? Has he mentioned that? Yeah. About the hit? Uh, I, I don't... To you specifically, not not that you remember from trial, but did you and he ever have a conversation like that about hiring somebody? Yeah. Like maybe he's joked about it. Yeah. 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 I'm you pretty sure he yeah, like he he's joked about it, but it's like we're not even. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's joked about it about. About hiring him. Yeah. yeah. He's very. <laughs> he's very free with what he says, you know, and I never take, you know. I never take. Sometimes, like I said, like I literally even like, block it off. Okay, so they made a trip up here in June. Yeah. Did you all receive any money from Charlie for that trip? For when they like to help pay for the rental car or anything. I've had. I mean, like. I'm trying to think. Whenever, okay, so he got, Sigfredo got that paper. Like I said, he's never told me anything about it. Obviously, there has to have been information in there. Obviously, they don't, either one of them don't want me to know. And I don't want to know. I didn't want to know it, so. And you told right. Sigfredo it was in there to get it. The, yeah, to get it. it. Like, just get it off the bag. Like, I think he came over, and then he probably went to the apartment, saw the kids, and I was like, oh, I have a pay for you in the bag. And then I just remember him stuffing it in his shorts, and then, and then walking out. Okay. And we never spoke about it again. Okay. Like he never told. I never asked him like, oh, what was on that or whatever. No, nothing. Like we didn't have a conversation about it. Okay. So 
And then, like, I don't know when Sifredo, like, leaves. I don't know, like, what his, you know, we'd be good. And then I don't know what's going on with him. And I don't want to know what's going on with him, you know. So I kind of, like, block that out, too. Because whenever I was with Charlie, then obvious. And just like that, too, like, with conversations, it's not like I'm there, like, planning things or whatever. It's just whenever I'm not with one, I'm talking to the other. Yeah. It's not nothing specific or anything that has to do with what happened. It's just... I'm not, I don't talk to each other with like they're right next to me. Right. So obviously you guys weren't financially stable. Yeah. Renting a car to drive to Tallahassee is <laughs> Yeah. How did that happen? Um, I think it's, um, that Charlie has given me money like, oh, like I probably told him like, hey, I need, I need some money so that like. Charlie has given her money numerous times, usually cash, so it could not be traced. And I would always just say like this people or whatever, but. Now I'm thinking about it like he knew it was, you know, sick credit the whole time. So, um, yeah, probably like asking, asking for like a couple so of dollars. So Charlie gave you all the money to pay for the real car? Yeah, like he'd give it to me and then I'd give it to sick I guess, like so that he can go about wherever he needed to go. But I didn't know about the Tallahassee, like even like yeah. anything with Tallahassee. You didn't know where they were going. You no, just knew no. that the, the problem that Charlie had, they were going to handle and they needed money to deal. How did you know about that he needed a rental car? What did Sick Fredo say to you? What, about getting a rental car? Did, how did you know it wasn't? I mean, he does it, he now? has, he has a... Miami. How did you know that the problem wasn't in Miami then? How did you know he needed a rental car? That he had to go travel somewhere? Yeah, yes. I don't, I don't know, like when, I, I didn't know anything about like the Tallahassee thing, but I guess he had to go somewhere, it wasn't, that it wasn't going to be local. Okay, so then yeah, you come to you and tell you, I need money for this, and right. then... You say, I need, a, I need money for a car, I need you to get money from... Your... How did you know to go to Charlie and ask for the money that he needed? Is what he's trying to get. Well, because from the whole thing with the paper. But he didn't tell me what was on it or whatever, but I figured like he needed to scope someplace out. So if he's going to go somewhere, then he needs a car so here, to do here, that. I... You're trying to answer for Garcia. Answer for you. Garcia came to you and asked for, did he come to you and ask for money? Did he come to you and say, hey, I need money? Hey, I'm, I, don't, what Garcia was doing is, is totally different. Yeah. How did it go from you back to Charlie, back to Garcia? How did that? Yeah, I mean, I would assume that that's what Sigfredo told me. He's like telling me like, oh, I need money. like to go scope this place out. So you needed like a vehicle. Do you remember having conversations with Garcia about that type of stuff? That, hey, I need money for a rental car. Do you remember having those conversations with him? That he needed money, yeah, for rental car, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. And then I would just relay it back to, like, Charlie, like, I need, I need money so that, that they, yeah. That's all I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. And they would money. I know, it sounds like such a simple thing, but it's like, I'm. I guess I'm just you're trying to get through my brain. Because yeah. it, it could have been in Miami, right? Yeah. I guess I, I. I mean, I never assumed that it was gonna be in. Maybe that was just my assumption that it wasn't anywhere local. Yeah. You know, obviously, if he's needing money, like, what do you need money for? I'm not gonna ask you specifics. I'm saying you need to get a car. You need, you know, a place to stay. You need, you know, you need to rent somewhere. So, I was asking you questions, just trying to refresh your memory yes. so you can bring up yes, details sir. about yeah. what you remember, okay? Yeah. So we're not trying to trick you or get you off track, and, and we're just I trying to refresh your memory. I'm trying to recall back to of like how it even like occurred or what, you know, what was happening. Okay. Yeah. So at what point, how did Charlie get the money to you? Did he just meet you and give you cash? I mean, like, like I was hanging out with him, so it would be like, yeah, he'd give you like a hey, couple hundred dollars, yeah, like, and Obviously, he knew what it was for. Like, in. Not like. I, I'm just like. I didn't think about it. Like, you know, like I wasn't there, like, oh, okay, like this is for this and that. Like, that wasn't. As the go between, Magwana knew more than she is admitting to the detectives. Charlie would not have continued to give money without knowing exactly what it was for. And if he had been in contact with Garcia himself, he wouldn't have needed Magwana at all. I'm just okay. Like I was just okay with it. I was just doing it. You know, yeah. okay, you need the money, okay. I don't wanna know what for, I don't know. Like obviously now I know the rental and all that stuff, but it's like I didn't know. Like you I got, get him the money. Yeah, like take care of Charlie's to problem. Do whatever you need to do 
what I'm looking, and then I will get it from one end to another. Okay. All right. At that point, did you know Lewis was involved? No. no. That whole thing, yeah, with Lewis was all... All our steel. I... Okay, I know we're going to be jumping into a lot of things, and I hope I'm not frustrating you, because no, I not. feel like... No. I, you're not yeah. frustrating us. No, it's... I'm watching the process in your head. And it's like I talk with my hands, I'm getting nervous. It's fine, it's fine. Go ahead. Um, because I know, like, my brain is, like, jumping from one place to another. The whole thing with with Lewis is obviously, like, and that's how Zephyrito functions, too. He never tells me. You think he's going to tell me. He doesn't tell me things. This is what I want you to under, you guys to understand. Zephyrito does not tell me things. He tries to keep me away from a lot of things. Sure. A lot of things upset me through the trial that I found out that it's, like, it hurts for me to know because this is the father of my children, you know? Like, I'm not, like, he's not a bad person. I know it sounds bad, but it's like he's not, he's not this person. And granted, I went to him, obviously, stupid mistake for even me to be involved in any of this, but when, when the whole thing, when the whole, uh, I guess the bump or whatever, and like, like the weird phone calls and Charlie telling me this thing or whatever, little by little, I kind of like, and then the whole Lewis thing, and that's what like, Clicked in my head, I was like, Lewis, like, Tato, like, Tato and Tuto, like, you know, they always mistake their names. And then I'm just like, like, again, me and Sigfredo, we never had a chance to, like, talk. Like, he doesn't, like, I, and I've asked that, you know, I've asked plenty of times, like, Tara, why can't, why can't we be in a room with, you know, Sigfredo, like, I need to know these things, like, I can't answer these questions. I know it's kind of just like, I know to protect, like, you know, like, from both sides or whatever, but... I needed to see him face to face. I needed that. Like, like now it's like we've been so separated so far. It's like I don't even know. See, the that problem person. is we don't want you talking about what Sigfredo told you after the fact. We want you yeah. telling us what you know leading up to all this and during all of this. You were with you were with Sigfredo. You were with Charlie. Yeah. You were part of a lot of these conversations. Yes. And that's what we want to hear from you is what those conversations were. And how they went along. So, I mean, at one point you did know Lewis was involved because you call, tried calling Lewis to get a hold of Sufredo right but after I, the murder. Yeah. You had his old number. Yeah. You called his old number. So somehow you did know that he was with Lewis. That's why you tried to call Lewis. But I never knew, like, I really honestly never knew that he would, like, that Lewis, I mean, obviously, like, now I think about it, like, they're always together, like, but at that time I'm trying to reach Sufredo. I don't know what made me like call him or him call me or I'm just trying to reach him. I'm trying to get to him. Yeah, and he's the only and, one you tried to call at that time. So yeah. You got so, a little of Ortiz, but anyways. Before yeah. that trip, you knew that he was going with him on that trip. No, I never knew that he was so going with him. How did you know to call him? Maybe not the first trip, but the second trip you knew he was there, right? Because you were talking to him during that second trip, right? Talking, talking to Sufredo. Yeah, but he never told me that he was with Lewis. Like he never. He never explained that. To he me never. All. He never told me that he was with Lewis. Okay. Because even with the whole thing, with the whole bump and everything, like that started coming out, and that's why I was like, why does it seem like to me that Sefredo was, you know, like something was going on with Lewis? Like he was almost kind of like, like oh, let me find out. Let me find out. Like. What is somebody, are somebody talking to, to Lewis or is he like talking to, you know, like police or whatever about something because why is his name coming up and he never told me anything that he was with Lewis. Like I know, like that's one thing that I know, like I never knew because I didn't know that till later on. Okay. And I know that I called him but it's like I don't know what made me call him that day or if I had seen him beforehand or... Okay. So, so in June. The timing of the call is too convenient to be a coincidence, but the detectives are willing to let that point slide for now. They made a trip up, and it, nothing happened. Did you know, did they, was there any conversation after the June trip with you and Garcia about nothing happening? Was there a conversation after that? Yeah. Not that I can recall, no. I mean, because... Obviously it didn't, and so I'm wondering 
what triggered them going back again in July. And how did they fund that too? So obviously something had to go back and forth to Charlie to know that there's going to be a second trip. So what? Tell us that? about it. Tell us what you know. I just I, I can't. Okay, because okay June. You said that they went, you know, obviously they went, or they went, or just one. I don't like that. They both, I don't yeah, they both went in June. Uh -huh. They both came back. And then actually, I think you, I think Wendy came down to Miami, and that's when you all went to the beach. That was around June? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I have never spoken to Wendy about anything. Like, that was the next question. Was yeah, like I've never, <laughs> I've never spoken to Wendy about anything. So you tell us, does Wendy know, did Wendy? know about this? Did Wendy know what was going on here? Did she From know that time? The, I mean, I think they kept it like, I think Charlie's always said that my family doesn't know anything, like, or Wendy doesn't know anything. So, at, at some point, I mean, I, I figured out that Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. So Charlie was saying to you, my family knows nothing? Yes. Okay. I mean, see, this is where it gets difficult because it's like, I, you know, like, with the whole, okay, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's, it, like, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know, like, I just feel like every single time that, like, Charlie would, like, talk to his mom, like, it was always, like, if I was, like, in the house, like, he'd never talk to her, it, like, on the phone with me, he'd always walk away and stuff, but I almost feel like his mom always knew something was going on, or something needed to be taken care of. Would he ever like, tell you, mom, though? He'd never tell you? I mean, like, he kind of, like, he, he was the type that he would really, like, oh, like, my family doesn't know anything about that. But in my head, I'm like, okay, then why do you walk away and, you know, like, whenever we're talking about something. Or, like, you know, like, you're keeping, you don't want me to hear it. Like, you don't want me to hear something. Email messages from Donna to Wendy showed that both knew that something was going on and that Donna was likely the one who was pulling the strings. So, obviously, his mom must have known something. Well, later on... During forgot the whole bump, Charlie tried to get you to come down and meet with his parents. Do you remember that? We even played those calls in trial, so you've heard that call again since you've had the calls. But not hit to meet his parents. It was it to was meet him. In to meet his parents, because you decided not to go inside. You said meet me down the street at the restaurant. I don't want to meet your parents. I want to meet down the street at the restaurant. I don't think I ever said I'm going to meet your parents. That was on the calls. He was wanting you to. He was wanting you to come into the icon and meet with his parents. And you were like, yeah, I, don't, I want you to come down. I don't want to come in there with them. And I want you to come down to the Charlie. So yeah, that, that don't, you don't remember that either? No, I remember meeting up with him, but I don't remember him like insinuating like, oh, you'd have. He said that he was with his parents, but I've never like been never and, and all. all. No, not like okay. together like that. Like we're all together now. So, you never had any conversations with his mom, Wendy? No. Never, never had a conversation with Wendy, never had a conversation with his mom. Now, my opinions on that is completely different. <laughs> you, like, you because, trial, you yeah, yeah, like, obviously, yeah. like I said, like, I put the, you know, like, that's how my brain is working, too, is that I'm putting things, and I was like, okay, what's this well, what you just said is what you know. Yes. And that's literally all we're here trying to do. Yeah. Like, do not guess. And I want to say my opinion. Yeah. And I don't want to. Yeah. Like, and and we will know the difference in your opinion, but what you know and what you heard is all we're here trying to get to. Well, what you see and what you heard is important, even though in the, what developed your opinion. Yeah. Did you hear or see something outside of what you saw in trial? Did you see something before trial, before all this happened, that led you to that? So, we'll, we'll like, did, you, did you hear Charlie saying something? Did you see him doing something? Did you have? Did you experience something that now you think, oh, that's how? That's why she knows because Charlie said this or said that or did that. Is there anything that led you to believe that? Well, the whole conversation with his mom, like you know, like again, it's like was going back and forth. Like he's having a conversation with his mom. He must have mentioned something about me because his mom is like obviously talking about me. You're talking about the title three calls again. What, what you heard in trial? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess we'll, we'll backtrack. Let's go back to July 2014. They make another trip. Was the circumstances surrounding that was similar to the other one where money had to be exchanged to rent a car? Yeah, if Sofredo had asked me, like, you know. Do you remember that? 
if you didn't have any money, you probably would have asked me, like, hey, I need, I need some money. <laughs> but do you, you remember? Do you remember? I don't, you don't remember? I don't remember if you had asked me for money for Do you remember just afraid trade. of going to Tallahassee? No, this is the whole time. So I'm asking a couple specific things in this world because these are just things I'm trying to confirm. Mm -hmm. So, do you remember anything about the dark? And Rivera testified about this stuff. Do you remember anything about the Instagram and Rivera posting something stupid? What, he was talking about like the tiger or whatever he had? Yeah. He had it has changed, yes. <laughs> um, it might be a zebra next week, I don't know. I mean, like through the trial and stuff, but no, nothing but do you happened. remember? Oh, the, the yeah, things that happening? No. Yeah. You don't remember no. calling and saying, "Hey, no. you dumbass, you put something on." I don't remember what you said. There's no, I would have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't. I never knew about Lewis being with Sifredo. All right, so let's like, go I just, to the, like I don't know how much I can trust him, but like let's go I to the part know. about after it's done, and there's a phone call between you and Garcia. It's the first phone call. You've seen it a thousand times. First phone call after it's completed, they're about an hour and a half away from Tallahassee. When Rivera says he hears you and Garcia talking. Mm -hmm. Where were you when that conversation took place? Garcia made an incriminating post on social media shortly after the murder, giving away his location. Magwana angrily confronted him and forced him to take it down. When I was talking to Sigfredo on the phone? Mm -hmm. After Dan has already been shot. Well, was he saying that, like, I know? Or, right. like, I said I know, yeah. but I never said I know, uh, or even I, had a conversation. We're getting there. Yeah. I'm getting there. So, where, where, where were you? Yeah. Do you remember where you were when that call was made? No. Okay. So, I you mean, don't remember? Me and Sefredo would talk, but, like, I, like, I don't know. Like, maybe I was in the house, in my house, in Treasure Drive. Okay. Either that or I was, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, let's, let's get this. You did take money. From Charlie's house. Yes. And take it and meet Garcia and Rivera. The day after. That's like that's where it gets a little blurry for me too because I've gone to you know to Lewis's house right. plenty well, of times and going. Okay, irrelevant. Yeah. You took money. Like, <laughs> yeah. How much money did you get from Charlie? I never saw it. He what was it? In the trunk. Okay. Go through what? that whole thing. I don't care what day that was. Just tell me what, what that was. Okay, the the um the night that Charlie told me to come over to his house mm -hmm. and that like, he was like frantic about everything, I was like, okay, whatever, I'll come over. Okay. That's when he had mentioned that uh, about the accident, but I didn't know that that Markel got shot. Like I didn't know about about that. Like you knew it was I don't her. think he. Yeah, I didn't. Mean, not even him. I don't. That's I don't know if it was him that he was. I think so. I guess, but like never saying about like him getting shot or whatever. That's why that phone call of me knowing would have never occurred because I wouldn't even know anything. And okay. Charlie didn't say anything on the phone. Well, obviously, a phone call occurred because there's records of that, and you and Garcia talked. Well, yeah, like of me. But you don't that. remember the specifics that Rivera's told. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Fine. That's fine. Okay. We can work with Before that. you went to Charlie's, you went and met with Sigfredo. When they got back to town that night, you went and met with Sigfredo. Then you went to Charlie's. You remember that? I don't think I met with Sifredo though. Like, I it's the had talking to him. Was talking to him. Talk to him. And then you showed up right there when they were close to her house, and the records show you all. They went the Duff was it Duffy's? Was that the sports bar they went to? That was close by. Or yeah, right, right, close by. I don't, I don't recall meeting up with Sifredo. I do recall going to Charlie's house. Because right was, after that, that's when you talked to Charlie and you drove up there to Charlie's house. It was right after you. Because I know I left, I know I left, and we were like Charlie was telling me to come over to his house. Mm -hmm. Do you remember me with kind of... Sigfredo after we got back and telling you that it's taken care of or any of that? Like, do you remember meeting with him when he got back in town? When he got back in town, and I understand you don't know that he that they at this time that he killed him mm -hmm. or shot him, but do you remember him meeting saying that this is handled? We handled this for your, for your friend or anything. After that, I don't know if he, he, he might have come. No, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just saying, what made you facilitate a I, phone call with Charlie to get the money? Well, obviously, Charlie knew something happened. Therefore, when that happened, he was supposed to have that money, like, ready. Because okay. he knew that he had to pay. So that was the understanding once it was done that he was to pay yes. right away. Yeah, but I wasn't. 
like I didn't know I'm going up there to go meet up with Charlie so that I can, you know, to get that. Like he doesn't want to say anything obviously on the phone. Right. So when I got up there, I just remember that he was like frantic and he was just like I didn't even remember he had like like a gun with him and I was just like what? Like but he was he was he was like just acting weird at that when I got to his house. And um I know he had taken like a Xanax and then I might have too because we just fell asleep. Like I can't even recall like what conversation was happening or whatever. I just know that he in the morning before I left, he's like, Hey, it's in your trunk. And I was like, Okay, in my understanding that that's like the money in my trunk. Never looked at it, never opened anything, never had it like in my hand. Okay. So, so when you met up with him, where'd you meet up with him at? With who? With Charlie? No, with no. Garcia and Rivera. So you left Charlie's house that next morning. Come on. Yes. Okay, when, I, when I drove back down, I think that's when I'm trying to look for Sigfredo, and he was like nowhere to be found, and that's when I had like called, um, I don't know if he called me or I called him or whatever, because he's, that's why with the phone number was like confusing me, because other people had their phones, like, um, or you told me, I mean, like you said that it wasn't even, it was. So it was, you mean you called a number, a number. You had for Rivera that somebody else answered? No, you're talking about Ortiz, aren't you? Yeah, like I, this, like they, I don't know if somebody <laughs> was living, was he living in that apartment in this game? Or so whatever, like other was, people I mean, were like hanging out. I know where it was, you know where it was. Well, I know he was at Shrimp's house. Well, yeah, I don't but, know where, I think he was couch shopping. But I think he had his apartment too, somewhere along like seventy something in Biscayne. He could have. I uh, be honest with you. But either way, that's, you that's where me. like you know all of them hung out or whatever. But like they would exchange phones and stuff. Like other people, like is the Ortiz number Ebro's phone? Yeah. Okay, so I remember Ebro was always like at his house. So I'm trying to contact them. That's why I'm never trying to contact Lewis. So um, that was like, That was after you tried to call her. You try to call Lewis first on his old number, and then you call him after that. Okay. But so you, all this was just to find Sigfredo. Okay. Yes. So all these calls you're making is you now have the money. You, you left Charlie's house. Charlie gave you the money. It's your understanding. Obviously, you didn't see him touch it. I did that. Yeah. But you knew that he put money in the back to pay yes. it. Yes. So all these calls you're making is to try and find Sigfredo to give him this money. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Where did you find him? Uh... I was, I think I was parked behind, I don't know if he, I, I don't know how I came about, but like I just ended up like in the, kind of like um, in the hallway of like, like the alleyway of Lewis's uh, um, apartment. Mm -hmm. And he just like jumped inside the car out of nowhere. Like he Lewis was, did? No. Oh, um, Sigfredo did. Oh, okay. Because, okay. you know, I guess he didn't want me to know that he was somewhere else and clearly he was at uh, Shrimp's house and, you know, I couldn't find him or anything. What made you go so, to the alleyway outside of Lewis's apartment? I think he told me to go over there. or So you got a hold of him on the phone and he told you to go meet him over there? Yeah, I just thought that I had to go over there. Okay. Uh, what happened then? So he goes, he gets in the car, I was like, hey, you know, you got a package in the back, grabs it, and goes. And then I left, I left to go home because, yeah, I left to go home. Did you ever see it at all? No, I never saw it. So like, the package. in the package, you never, like, you just jumped out of no. grabbed out of the trunk? Yeah. And he didn't give you... He, that money. he didn't give me money to, till like he came back like later on. I don't know if it was the same day, but like then he gave me money. How much did he give you? I didn't like I don't know. Came back where? Let me ask you a random question. Was it stable? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he came back. How much he gave you? Is that what you said? Huh? You don't know how much he gave you? No, he didn't. What I mean, I didn't count. Like I know it, it was. You know, it was. After everything she had done. Magdwana should have known exactly how much money she had been owed and would have checked to make sure Garcia gave her the correct amount. A couple of stats, but it's like I didn't, like not a specific number. And I'm not going to say like 30 because that's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's a number that's like sticking yeah, out. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're very saying. Stacks of what? Stacks of what exactly? Stacks of like, of like stable money. But what were the bills? Do you remember the size of the bill? How much? What kind of bills were they? One dollar bills? I think they were like hundreds and then maybe like hundreds and like twenty like you know, twenties like and okay. and they were stable. Yes. Okay. 
Where were you at when he brought you that money? I was in my apartment. So he came back to your apartment? Yes. So, the next part of it gets a little... Well, can I just, I mean, like, I, I don't want to, like, because I just want to get it out of my head so that you get, you know, obviously. Um, I just know it was kind of like, and there's another thing that stick out, like, that, that, uh, that Charlie was saying about, like, oh, like, cleaning the money or, like, like, actually, I guess, cleaning the money because it was, like, after, like, I put, I got the money and then I put it away in my closet. Like I said, like, that's why I don't know the amount. I never counted it. I'm not there sitting and counting it. But it did, like, get moldy. Like, it was, like, wet. Like, it was, like, moisture. So I think it was literally, like, washed. Because it was, like, it was, I was, like, hey, like, does it, like, this, like, this thing, like, looks like, and I'm thinking in my head. Or, yeah. But like he's he said stuff like that and I just you know I didn't think about like actually I like I, I didn't feel for it that it was wet or anything but you know it started getting like moldy and stuff and I was like oh the money that you gave me is like moldy <laughs> like I think it was just wet it was just like just drying it just blow drying it and I was like okay and then that was like the end of it he so not Charlie's that I, the one that was talking about cleaning the money washing. yeah like okay. like I said he makes Charlie makes these like comments and things that like I would be oblivious to and not really pay attention to until like after like I'm you know things that he's saying like you said like I said he's like he made sure that I knew that he didn't print that whatever it was was in the envelope you know like he's like oh I wear gloves when I put it in like he's telling me things so that I guess like you know he wouldn't be blackmailed or whatever so there's no way for it to come back to him. Yeah, he, yeah, he was gonna. I mean, he was he using me through the whole thing, you know. Obviously, like feeding me other stuff, and I believed it. Right. Like an idiot. So, so when Sigfredo paid you the money, and he came back to your apartment and gave it to you, did he tell you anything about what happened and that, and or how it happened? You know, he never told me any of these details. Okay. At what point did you find out that Dan Marco was dead? That I, I don't remember. I know from like the whole bump, like I at that point like before that thing, I, I like I don't know if like somebody passed away. I mean like if he passed away or anything or like that even that's where it gets blurry for me because I don't know when I found out that that would you know You obviously knew the before whole, the bump because that happened a couple years later. Two years later. Two years later. So Yes. Okay. Yeah. What point I don't know because you're working for Charlie. You're working for Charlie, mm -hmm. he's paying, you're supposedly cleaning the office is what you said, mm -hmm. right? Um, and he's paying you money. At that, what point, while that's happening, do you know that he's dead at that point? Because the funeral's already happened, things are already on the news, things, all that stuff's happening already. I believe so, I think, yeah, like I think. Do you know who told that? you how you found out? I don't know if it was, if it was Charlie that told me. Yeah. I went back when when Garcia gave you the money. Did he tell you why, or did you know why? I just knew that he had to take care. He did something that you got to. He's getting, he's getting paid for. Like and he that's it. Money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He didn't tell me like what happened or how he got it. So you knew that. I mean, was like I, yeah, not exactly. for me, but you know. Yeah. You knew that that was your portion of what Charlie put in that. I mean, Sigredo just tends to give me. You know, like he even like if he, if. He, he knows that I was like a stickler about like, you know, like, hey, you have to help me out with the kids or whatever. Like, that's why I even put him on child support because obviously he blew through whatever money he had. I don't know how much money he had. Mm -hmm. I know he got, you know, like he just gave me a portion of it. And I don't know if that has something to do with his portion too, but I, I usually have. Was there an understanding that you were going to get a portion of it once they take care of this for helping? Yeah, he, I mean, he was just going to pay, like, not right. like, this is your specific portion, but he's like... It was understanding okay, you get some money. Yeah. Right. You I mean, no amount. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's an understanding that you were going to get some money. Maguana isn't being honest about her payment. This isn't the kind of action someone coordinates without knowing how much they will make for the risk they're taking. Once this was completed from what Charlie was paying. Well, for him to do this, like, it was just, it's so that I can have money. Yeah, right. like, you know... That's what, that's what I wanted to clear up. Okay. Um, I just wanted to clear all that up because I know you're, I know it's all processing in your head and you're going back and forth, so I want to make sure we have it clear as to what your understanding of it was at that moment. Because that's all we're caring about. And you're, you're, 
your my perspective, 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 your involvement, yeah. what you saw and experienced during this thing. What knowledge you have, it's not so much your involvement because no matter what you did, it's it's over with for you now. You don't have anything else to get in trouble for. I want you to understand that. I know you don't want the perception, and it's hard to admit that yes, I did this and it was wrong. It's hard to admit it, and I, don't, and I know that's a problem for you, and you don't want that out there. But and this is probably a conversation where you're, if your attorney was here, we would step out and he could have another conversation with you about this because it's really important that you tell us everything that you know. Yeah. And you know, it's yeah. time now because nothing worse is going to happen to you. For anything that you know or that you say, nothing worse is going to happen to you. Let me ask you this. Where are your kids right now? Still with my family. You're staying with your brother still? Yeah. Okay. Has anybody ever threatened you or promised you anything not to testify or not to cooperate no. in this? No. Nobody's ever? Nobody's you're ever no coercion whatsoever nothing. of why you didn't want to cooperate early on or anything I mean, else? I that, mean, that's a whole other fogging of like, you know, why I never even went for it. Like, even from the first day that I had gotten arrested, like with everything being retracted, like we were all so confused. We we're like, I still, even when Zigfredo got arrested and I'm like, I blocked everything off. Everybody's like blowing up my phone trying to tell me like, you know, what happened or whatever. And like, that he was involved in all of this. It's like, I just didn't want to hear anything about it. I didn't go off. You think I was there like Googling? Like, I did not want to know. Like, I know I had to take care of my kids and that's it. And so I just- You read the probable cause with the attorney. The probable on. So you knew what the facts were of what- Well, it was a framework. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, like I knew the facts from his probable cause. Right. I want to go hire his attorney. So it's like his attorney started like, advising me, like telling me like, hey, like you might, you know, like need to get your own attorney because you have, you know, like they're starting, they're saying your name right. and all this stuff or whatever, just to protect myself. And that's when I had hired um, Tara. Well, I had somebody else and then I hired, I hired Tara after. Okay. Well, here's what, you ever heard the term minimization? Minimizing, minimizing someone's role in something. A lot of people have a hard time admitting to what they did and what their role is in something. And it's called minimizing. They minimize their role in I, it. And, and, and I don't want you to do that here. Yeah. Okay? Because it's I only going to really, hurt you. I know. We have a strong case on Charlie. It's stronger yeah. than what we had on you. Yeah. You know, this is not something that we're, you know, we have to have you or anything. We're hoping you're going to tell us the truth and we're hoping you're going to come forward and tell us everything. Yeah. Okay? I don't want you to minimize this because it's only going to hurt yourself. Okay? Yeah. So, I, I get But that's, that's why it's like, and I get it. And I get um, because everything you're telling us is how you didn't know this, you didn't, you weren't aware of this and that. It because nothing matter. was ever like for certain, and that's why I, I say it in that in that way. Like this whole thing, this the whole time, it's I was, and I I'm not gonna put blame on anybody else or whatever because I take accountable of like all of this, and that's why I've been fighting. I'm fighting the whole time too, is because it's like what am I supposed to do? Like if I was. To have cooperated from the beginning, that destroys everything. Even Sigfredo, even and, and like I, and I get it, and I get you guys. Everybody's already had this whole perception. I honestly, I just want a chance to get home to my children. This is why I am in the situation right now. Right, and that's and, what I'm trying to tell you right now. Is being totally honest is what can help you. But if I, you're holding back and trying to minimize your role in this, it's only going to hurt you. Okay, does that, does and, that make I, sense? I, and I understand I'm, that, but I'm not going to be, uh, but it's to the point too that I'm like, I wasn't for certain with a lot of things. And that's okay. why okay. I'm not going to go. I understand you're not certain what was going to happen. You're not certain how they were going to handle it or what the actual planning of any of it was. But it was an understanding. There was some kind of communication, some kind of conversation that happened where it was an understanding to you that Charlie was going to give you money and you were going to have. Sigfredo, take care of Charlie's problem. Yes. That was that was a certain understanding, yes. correct? Yes. I understand that you don't remember the exact words of how yes. it was said, but that was an absolute, right? Yes, you knew that he was going to pay you money yes, to give to Sigfredo to take care of the problem. You knew that you were going to get a portion of that money for taking care of this problem for Charlie. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's, that's what we're getting. We understand you won't remember exact words and exact conversations, but the actual context, that's what the context means. Um, yeah. 
is the actual conversation, the understanding of what is going to occur and how you're going to be compensated for what, taking care of that issue. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that's what we need to get to is those conversations of how the planning of it and how it came about and then how once it was taken care of. The detectives have called McBona out on her attempts to deflect some of the responsibility. This means they aren't going to keep letting her get away with saying that she doesn't recall certain events or that she doesn't know most of the details. How the compensation happened and how they knew to compensate at that point. Um, and then I mean, it was, everything like, it that was happened basically afterwards. like understanding without verbalizing it. That's that's the part. It's like, okay, like that's going to happen. And then it, like, again, I just relay, you know, but um, I can't tell you like specifically I was I think it's the sign for me to really not know, and that's the part, don't you think, if I would have known specifics and everything up from the day one, I would have been like, hey, you don't want to spend. But like, you knew you could have I know, but I'm saying, like, keep okay. me happy. We only got 45 minutes, so let's talk about the things you don't know. Let's try to talk about things that you know that we don't know that... Like conversations you had with Charlie after the bump, things like that. Conversations you had over the phone that weren't recorded or through WhatsApp. Did he at some point come to you and, and tell you to switch over to WhatsApp? We use WhatsApp every now and then, so it was never like to just, oh, okay, talk to me through so you WhatsApp. you been doing it for a while? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what are some of those conversations you had with him about this, even after the bump? Some things that we don't know about. Because it's that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not like, I mean, all that stuff has been recorded, but I never thought, you know, like, I, we're not really thinking that it's like we're being recorded at that time. I guess he was thinking that he was so being that, recorded. Okay, so but, he was. But that conversation at, at Dolce Vita. Yes. It, it, what do you remember about that conversation? Well, that's when, okay, so the bomb happened, right? And then he had spoken to his mom. Yes. Obviously, his mom was freaking out about something, and that's why he needed to talk to me. Yeah. So when he spoke to me about it, he's feeling me out, and I'm, like, trying to find out what's going on and stuff, but not really, like, taking... I, honestly, like, I wasn't taking it seriously. Like, I wasn't, like, okay. heightened by it. Like, okay, like, it's a serious situation, but I was, like, at the same time, I'm, like, well, you not... Had that. It was, but that, that so when y'all first met, that, that, that it was almost like right. He wasn't sure. Trying to he, snitch on, like, you know, yeah. you were setting him up, and yeah. kind of the same. Okay. When y'all first met, y'all met in the car first. Do you remember that now? Yeah. Y'all first met in the car. What did he say in the car to you when you first sat down? He said, "All right, I just met with my mom." Blah. What did he say? I don't like. He didn't say anything. I did not, nothing. Nothing. He same. told you about yeah. the bump, right? He told you what happened there. This is the very first time he told you about the bump because okay. over the phone you couldn't talk about it. Okay. He didn't know. He met with his mom in person. He drove to your office. You came out of the and you got in his car. What was that? What did he tell you? I, I That's don't a remember. big I thing know. that he talked about. Because I didn't even remember that time that we spoke in the car until. Until we brought it up again. Magbana was the first person that was contacted after the hit. While certain details may have faded over time, she would at least remember the general content of that conversation. After, like, I didn't, I didn't even remember, like, okay, like, I, from my understanding, I just probably jumped in his car, like, really quick, and then, like, okay, where do you want to eat? Or wherever, where do you want to talk? And then... Well, he showed you the note, right? He showed you the note. did not show me, I swear, he did not ever show me any note, anything, because even in that video, like, you're seeing him, he's going like this, but he never, yeah, like, read it, but he never showed it to me. Well, he, he probably sure. read it to you. Did he read it to you? Did he pull it out of the car? He, had he to... got some information. Like, he's, like, talking about it, but he's never... Because why wouldn't he just show it to me? Like, it's like he... Well, he didn't trust me. you. He didn't trust you. He didn't know if you were trying to get more money out of him. He didn't know if it was you extorting him. I get that. But I'm just trying to get you... What did he tell you in that car? We didn't. We weren't part of that conversation. We recorded that. Yeah, nothing that stuck out to me that... Nothing? You know. Do you remember? Okay. I literally felt like we just went, he, I, like I went in his car, like he's like, oh, probably like parked over here, like where are we going to eat? Okay. But no conversation about about anything. And that's why it was like kind of funny too, that, it, well, not funny, but you know, like about like maybe he was like frisking to see if I was like wired or something. I'm like, none of that happened. Like literally, okay. we didn't even, like how long were we in the car? I don't even remember being in the car. 
that long. It did nothing stuck out in that conversation. Okay. Well, another conversation you know we talked about a while ago when you drove down there to meet with him, and he was with his parents at the Icon, and you met him at the restaurant. What was that conversation about? Okay, when I had met, because because I was getting upset too because I needed to get something signed from him for like insurance purposes or whatever. And then I had it with, with me, and I was already in a fight with Sigfredo. That's why I was, like, in Yendra's house. Um, but I was telling him, like, meet me somewhere closer. I didn't want to go drive all the way down to South Beach or whatever, or, you know. But he was talking to his parents. That's the I phone was, conversation. I get yeah. that. We have that. Yeah. You know what you said on the phone. What happened when you got there? When I got there, okay, when I got there, he was already, like, I was trying to look for him, and he already finished his conversation with his parents. So whatever his conversation with his parents is probably something that he relied to me, but I can't remember what we spoke about. Probably the book, probably. The, I mean, that's the only thing that... I mean, because that's what happened. Days. You weren't talking on the phone anymore. Y'all were meeting in person at this point. So he would yeah. meet in person and talk to you about all this. this the book already happened, right? Sorry. So this is when he had spoken to me, so he's probably like just telling me he's... Not that probably, tell us what he told you about the bomb. Not he's probably telling me, or you're assuming, tell us what he told you about the bomb. That his mom got approached, and um, that's when the whole Lewis thing started sticking out in my so head. So tell us best, the best you can recall about that conversation, how he told you it. So he told you his mom got approached, what else? Not, not the Lewis conversation, what was the Lewis conversation? Okay, that his mom got approached, and that his mom said, that somebody said my name to his mom, so he's, I don't even know, because I'm a little bit, like, I'm kind of confused now. I, 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 confused with what you remember and what you're trying yeah, to Yeah, like, 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 what happened, like, what occurred, or whatever, because it's like the whole Dolce Vita, like, I was even confused when we were talking. What were you confused about? When he was, like, asking me questions, he's trying to ask me about like if, if this is somebody like I guess trying to set him up or trying to extort money from him okay that's what like extorting money from him mm -hmm. and I'm thinking in my head because then I Sifredo thinks that he, that Lewis has something to do with like to getting money out of his family and that's why I think Sifredo started to get a little like suspicious about it and that's when I put two and two and I was like okay so then Lewis has something to do with this too because why is he acting like this but he's afraid of not telling me like what's going on. Kind of like I'm just going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. Okay, okay, stop talking like and I'm trying and at that point I'm you know because I'm living with him and everything I'm like nagging him. I'm like what's going on? Like what's like what happened? And he's not telling me anything and that's the part that I wanted to speak to Sifredo about because no matter how many different ways they question her Maguana still relies on faulty memory and insists that the others left her out of the loop on most of their actions. I wanted to know. At this point, it's like I want to know what happened because, like, why, like, just clear out this whole thing. And that, was when a, I were, that was a little bit later because you actually had that conversation with him over the phone after y'all were messing up the phone number. After Charlie <laughs> left you, you never called Sigfredo. You went home that night and talked to him. Right. Okay, wait, after Charlie... So after Charlie came to your office and told you my mom got bumped into, this person came, gave, him a, gave my mom this paper, and this is all the different people it could be. It could be some extortionists, it could be all these other things. Yeah, you didn't I, call I, I, Fredo and talk to him about No, 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 no. It's like, yeah, we... Why didn't you talk, oh, we didn't talk even to him? We didn't even talk... No. On the phone. See, Fredo at that point didn't want to talk on the phone at all. Like, he was already, like, suspicious about everything. He thinks that's if, like, that Lewis like setting him up or something is happening or like that has to do with the police like okay. so at that point Lewis is on him. it's either that or it has to do it's something with Lewis he didn't tell me that's when even when we got home we didn't even like talk about it like it was like don't worry about it I'm gonna take care of it at this point did you still not know Lewis was involved well at this point I had an assumption yeah that he has something to do with it of course I mean, even, I'm, that's why it's like I'm, I'm looking back and it's like what, you know, like, he, they're always together, so, but at the same time, it's like, why would Sigfredo even need him to do anything when I went to you specifically? Like, why are you, you know, like, why are you involving? You never got a chance to ask him that? 
No, and that's what I wanted to ask him all of that stuff and for him to tell me because I know he'd open up and tell me. Like, I know you guys think that we probably were, like, here trying to, like, um, have this elaborate plan or whatever, but I just really wanted to talk to him and, like, for him to finally say things because there's a lot of questions where I feel like I it's got stuck. It's not so much that we didn't want you to have an elaborate plan. It's, like Pat said a little while ago, that, that you giving us information Garcia has, we can't use anything like that. We have to get it directly from Garcia. And there's a lot of things that sit on the cradle nose. And we would hope he would talk to us as well. But. May I ask if that's even a possibility? Very much because so. Because it's like, at the, at the end of the day, it's like, I just, of course, like, I, I felt like, why didn't he just step up and say something? I like, think he had a similar thought that you thought. You remember but about that's why 20 I minutes ago when you I said that I, if, if I had come forward, it would have screwed everything up for him? I think he has a very similar thought that he would do the same for you. He would protect you, for you. Only thing we think. So, and, and that's when in reality, the both of you are only protecting one person right now. And that was, well, at this point, that's changed. But Charlie was the only one. Oh, he was the last person that we uh, were, I, we were I, protecting. Did he be a fit? It's just. Okay, like, that's why I didn't understand why it took so long to, like, arrest him either. I was like, would all of this information and all, like, it would... If you would have talked to us, we'd have been arrested me. <laughs> I tried to come to you But that, that times. like, it, it never came off that way where it's like, oh, like, she... We knocked on your door, knocked okay, on your door. Why are you so not, scared of the FBI? Why are you so scared of you the You never, nobody ever said who they were. Like, I looked out the window and you guys did you not say who You saw the bag is on. You said on the phone those are police. The police are yeah, I never door. said it. It was his friend that came around and around the block and he told me that the FBI was in there. You guys, I swear you guys never announced <laughs> you knew the it. FBI I was, was talking to Cifre at the Didn't you too. guys have a, a conversation on the phone? Um, I mean, didn't you guys hear my conversation on the phone with Sigfredo? So if I would have, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then told he had you the told FBI me was talking to him. the FBI was talking to him. And then yeah. even on the phone, he's like talking about like, oh, these people are talking to me about like Tallahassee or whatever. And then we went to and your then, lawyer. We went to Sigfredo's lawyer trying to talk to him. And wanted, we wanted you to talk to us. You never would talk to us. I, well, I was more than willing to talk, but just the way that every, and every single time that it happened, it wasn't the way that it was. Like you guys said that you, like they announced, you guys never announced to me. I did not know until Mike told me that I had asked him and you, you guys were already over there. You guys came at the same time. So wow. I'm trying to blow up his phone, trying to see like who is it that's like knocking and you guys never announced it. My dog is like so every time in the back. Somebody knocks on your door, you call somebody to find out who it is. You call somebody. No, it's else. just the way they well, ask. Like is, they just knocked on the door. So we're just trying to talk to you. Anyway, that's irrelevant yeah. at this point. But bottom line, all right. Um, we don't have but a little bit more time. Um, is there anything that you can think of that conversation-wise that you had with Charlie or anybody else regarding this that we don't know about that you can help yourself out with by telling us about. Because right now you haven't told us a whole lot of what, what we haven't known. Already. But that's, that was always my problem because if I had all the answers, it would have been so much easier to just go by and... I'm not even asking for all the answers. I'm yeah. asking for any answer, any well, information. If you were sitting in our shoes and you watched all the trials and you saw what we got right and what we got wrong, is there something we are missing that you think we need to know? I don't even remember where to go from there. Like something that... Did, did I, we get something saying, wrong? I would gear towards oh, okay. Charlie's issues, not your own. I mean, I know what, I, I know where you differ. Because there was a us. lot of confusion. Like, I alone was confused. Of, like, how everything came about. It's like, okay, yeah, everybody was lying to each other. So there's all that confusion already. This may be the most honest statement Magwana has made so far. Each person was willing to sacrifice the other to save themselves and the level of distrust was high enough for all of them to lie to each other. After so many years, sorting them all out would be next to impossible. At that time, I can't think of how, why I acted the way I did, how I, you know, even prior to even giving in and, and doing this for Charlie. You know, I can't explain to you, other than financial issues, that he, that's what I'm saying, that he manipulated me. And this is like through time of him telling me things little by little and then probably just gave him like, 
yeah, whatever, like I had somebody and obviously I threw it off on Sigfredo. But when I'm talking to Sigfredo about it, it's never any details. So it's like, I was kind of always just like, okay, you know, like I, I just ping ponged it from one person to another. So it's not like for certain, for certain, like I'm there, like, you know, I'm coming up with like a master plan of like what's going to happen and this is how it's going to happen. It's just Charlie feeding me things that I can't even for the life of me remember specific, you know, like what it is that he exactly said or, you know, wanted me to do. What's something that we, you know, something we, we don't know? about how this all came together. After the bump, after your, your meetings with Charlie, obviously we, we have the things that are on the phone calls that you've heard, everybody's heard hundreds of times, and everybody in this room, I could say, has probably heard them hundreds of times. Um, obviously we know that outside of that, you guys had outside conversations. Um, obviously you were sweating it, you, you got police, FBI knocking on your doors. Mm -hmm. um, you have, people getting arrested now, your, your child's father is now arrested and charged with this. I know conversations happened. You guys said, okay, let's not talk on phones anymore. So conversations happened. You guys met in person and had conversations. What were those conversations like? With Sigfredo? With, or, or both. Or with both. both. Sigfredo and with Charlie. Those, those but really everything was kind of like on the phone too, like not just separate because obviously we were still talking on the phone. I wasn't under the impression. Charlie's always been the one who's been paranoid about it. Charlie and Sigfred was paranoid about it. Apparently I'm the only one who was like okay with talking on the phone because it wasn't really hiding anything. Like, yeah, like I knew about it, but I wasn't like <laughs> seeing, you know, like. I'm talking about after the phone. Charlie calls you, tells you don't talk on your phones, our phones are tapped. You guys get off the phone. Sigfred goes out and buys you guys, you and him, burner phones, okay? When that happens, you and Charlie have other conversations where you meet in person. Y'all have other conversations through WhatsApp. What are those conversations like? With the WhatsApp, it's just where we we're going to like meet up. That was your location uh, to meet up. Okay, yeah. when you met up, what were those conversations like? Okay, when we went to the icon, that was a conversation about like the whole bump. Okay. And then that's what I told you. Like I had seen his parents, but it wasn't to meet his parents. But I'm just... Like, I've never like even spoken to his mom or anything about any of this obviously my opinions on what everything now is different and mm -hmm. yeah like she like knew everything or like they him and charlie were always talking about it because why else would you always walk away but if you're going to involve me in this and why was he always walking away because he was like protecting his mom right the whole time absolutely so. but what was his conversations like with you about that Okay, we talked about the bump. He told you you were approached. Y'all had other conversations, okay? They approached the bump. You tried to call the phone number and you couldn't get through. I'm sure you went back and had that conversation with Charlie. What were those conversations like? It was all on the on the phone. I mean, it no, was all there was the, time. Time. the recorded phone yeah, calls. But after those phone calls, you he specifically calls you, tells you, we cannot talk on the phones. Hang up your phone. We can't talk on the phone or our phones are tapped. You guys stop talking and communicating on the phone at that point. And never spoke on the phone again. After you talked with WhatsApp. You, through WhatsApp, through you WhatsApp. did. And you said through WhatsApp, it's only locations to meet up. So we know y'all have met up. We know yeah. there was other conversations because there was a. He never were said, arrested right away. Yeah, but he never said anything on WhatsApp either. Like no specific. What about like your in person conversations? You met him in person. What kind of conversations did you have in person with him? <laughs> after that, after you stopped talking on the phone, now you're probably freaking out. Shit's yeah. in the fan. Yeah. People were being arrested, FBI's not on your door, this ain't flying under the radar, it's two years later, you thought you got away with it, now you didn't, now you're sweating. What are those conversations like? I can't remember what... You can't remember any of the conversations that we don't already know about that's already been in trial? Yeah, no, I can't remember any of the conversations we had after. Okay, that, those are the com kind of conversations that are going to help you, because what you're giving us is stuff we already know. Yeah. Stuff that we're already aware of, stuff that we already have. There is something in those conversations that Magwana is trying to hide. There is enough evidence against her that there is little chance that anything she reveals could cause more harm to her case. Except that we already have a really good case. Yeah. You're wanting help. Those are the conversations you need to remember. The things that we don't know. The things that we did not get on recordings. The things that we were not a part of. The things that we did not have any kind of 
information about. Those are the things that you need to remember. Those are, and those are the conversations I can't even remember right now. Like, I don't... But you've had years to think about this. Though. This isn't like today. This isn't like we're coming up with new questions today. You've been thinking about this case for years while you're sitting in jail. But that's the thing. I don't think about this case like sitting in the jail. Yeah, like, there's... You don't think about the fact that you won't see your children for the rest of their lives? You don't I think do. about that? This, yes, this case is what caused that. Katie, if, I know, you, want, if I know, you want, if you want, if you don't spend the rest of your life in prison, you're gonna have to have a real comfortable me, I don't, conversation I, with yourself and your attorney, something, because you're not there. This is a, this is these are conversations where an attorney usually asks us to leave the room so they can talk to you and say, look, you've got to come, you've got to come straight forward. You can't be half partial truth and half partial and deflecting I, the the blame on everybody else. That I didn't really know, but I should have. There are things there that you knew. I'm not saying you know everything, but there's things there that you knew, and what you're telling us just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. Well, friend, doesn't make sense. Anything. It's like the all of it. The fact make that sense. you don't remember any conversation about the most, probably one of the most stressful times of your life. That's why it's okay. A, I, I can't. No, 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 no. You remember those conversations. Those conversations are, are things that stick in your head. Those are the kind you can suppress. You can suppress things as it goes on and, and you're trying to focus on your trial, you know you're only giving us what we already know. You're only giving us the things that we already knew happened. You're not giving us anything else. And those are the conversations that you know because you're, that's the most stressful time of your life. You're going around, your baby daddy's just been arrested for this murder that you helped facilitate that did not happen without you. Okay, so you know those conversations. Those are the ones that you need to sit back and think about and try to remember because those are the ones that we don't know. Those are the ones that are going to help you. And I understand you don't want to take the blame for this, but it's you have taken blame. the blame. I'd you have it. taken it. You're here. You're yeah. not getting out. This is the blame for you. doesn't matter if you turn around and say, yes, I knew about it the whole time, or, oh, I didn't really know what was happening. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is what you heard, what you said, what you did with these people. That's what's relevant. That's all that's relevant. Is you can't what get any more happened. troubled. It can only get better. I, and I I'm trying to understand that. This is, this is the part that it's like, I can't... Uh, but you were worried about it being on camera a while ago. you got to wipe that out of your head. I've already People already know you're on camera. You're on camera. You're on camera and all this. It's That's irrelevant. What you need to focus on is remembering what happened and telling us what happened. That's the most important thing for you right now. Because without that, you're here. There's nothing. Yes, yeah, there's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Those conversations are the ones that you need to try to remember. But that's why, even from the beginning, that if, like, I would, would just, don't you think I would have just wanted to co cooperate from the beginning because you guys... I don't know why you didn't. We gave you many opportunities, and the whole thing, if you didn't know who was at the door, whatever, we tried, Katie, and you didn't come forward. I don't know why you didn't. You, have, you must have your own reasons. That's why I'm asking you if you've been threatened. If you've been threatened, we can protect you. If somebody's threatening you or threatening your family, I mean, we can now I'm worried about this whole thing after after the trial about the whole Latin King or whatever, but apparently that has nothing to do with me. Even no, I don't know what it's about. Yeah, <laughs> Latin King has nothing to do with you. I'm talking about why you didn't cooperate to start with. Why it's why you have failed to cooperate all the way until now. If there's something keeping you from doing it, please let us know. We can help with that. Is it just you don't remember the conversations? A lot of the things, yes, I don't remember. That's why it's like, and there was never conversations that stuck out because if something was to stick out, a converse, that's why right now I know it gets frustrating and I see it and I'm seeing it on your side. It's like if I was talking to somebody too, like just say it. And I've always wanted to be that. I want to be the one who says it. But if I'm not certain about it or con we wouldn't have even spoken on the phone to begin with if like right. if I was just gonna go off and just talk on the side anyways. Right. My my thing is is it's the conversations after you guys get off the phone. The things that Yeah, and there's it. nothing yeah. that stuck sticks out to ah. even be like oh. So okay, when you met the, the icon that day, remember that. You yes. met the icon that day. Yes. You didn't talk about the bump because the bump happened almost two weeks before that. The bump actually he told you about the bump in the car and at your work, outside your work and don't you yes. think when he called you back down the icon, it was because of a different bump. Do you remember any of those other bumps that happened? Because that's when you're on the phone cussing out, saying, I'm going to fuck up whoever's doing this, because blah, 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 blah all this other stuff. talking about, oh, this is, because he's thinking that he's getting, he's, like, that he's getting blackmailed. And I'm here thinking that Lewis is blackmailing Secreto. 
So that's the whole frustration. And like, I'm here trying to ask Sifredo things. He's not telling me things. And I'm here trying to figure out things to relate back to Charlie. And Charlie just keeps on and on about the same thing. So I was the one who was frustrated. That's the point that it's like I said all of that because it's like, you're making all of this, like you're listening to us and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, then I'm gonna call the FBI. But then it's like, what was I gonna do to call the FBI and what? Tell them what I'm telling you guys right now. At the end of the day, this is my life. Believe me, I want to get home to my children. I don't want to bullshit anything. I don't want to go through all of this. I don't want to waste your time. That's the last thing. I am in prison right now. I would yes. never think that I'd be in prison. So tell so us about, like, when he called you down there, what did he tell you about? That's what, and nothing sticks out to my head. There's a bump. He, he didn't bump? tell you about other bumps? A letter, a text message, a call to the office, those other bumps. That's when he called you down in the icon. But he already said he already said that over the phone. No, no, no. About... he just told you to come meet him. Unless you talk on WhatsApp, it's not on the phone calls. That's what I'm trying to get you to. Because he already said how did those about... conversations go? But we were on a phone call already regarding that. There was the okay, so his mom got that bump, and then the following thing was Considering the stress they were under, they weren't meeting for a friendly conversation. Panicked accusations, getting their story straight and promises not to reveal anything that might incriminate the others would all be more believable alternatives to Magwana's current version of events. I just wanted to let you know real quick that my merch shop, StrangerLabel.com, has a ton of quality and unique designs that you can purchase right now. And by doing so, support the channel at the same time. Items like the Architect and the Interrogator hoodies, the Mentally Checked Out and the Stranger t-shirts, the Do Not Cross mug and the all-seeing beanie are all there and available. Check out these and other items I have to offer on StrangerLabel.com and don't forget to use code STRANGER15 to get an extra 15% off your entire order. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the case. Somebody, I mean, like we were all trying to call that number and I'm here lying to him that I called it and then, and then Sufredo's lying to me about calling that number. But right. nobody's really calling the number. I don't know if Sufredo ever really did call the number because then he did say to me something about there's somebody Spanish that picked up the phone. No, and later then, on, yes. So did he really ever call that number? Later on he did, yes. Okay, and like left the message or that's the messaging that was on there? Okay, so then he's telling me that. That's all recorded like that. There was nothing ever after that that we spoke separate from it. And then he told me about that. Charlie told me about somebody going to his office and dropping off that, what, dropping off a letter or that they need that information or whatever. But we, that was all on the phone. There was never anything separate. You went, went from down the, remember you went down to the icon, met him at the restaurant? Yeah. That wasn't I on think the phone. he's just said everything that's been happening, not okay. anything Well, it was right after one different. of the bumps. Yeah. That was right after one of the bumps. That's why I told you that. Like, hey, you need to figure this out. You need to find out. He's pressuring me. Like, at this whole time, he's pressuring me things. Like, he's like, you need to find out what's going on. And he's trying to figure out if, like, Sifredo is, is probably doing something or trying to get somebody to get money from him or whatever it is. Whatever the cost. And Sifredo's freaking out because it might be Lewis that's doing something. So what he's, he's the one who's... That's what I mean. What did he say to you? To make you think that he he thought Sufredo was extorting him. What what would he say about that? Tell us that conversation. That's what we're trying to get from you. That's how that conversation went. No, because he, he's just going off. I that's why I don't remember specific things that right. he's saying, but he's probably yeah, he's going off and, and telling me you need to figure this out, you need to figure this out. Because in his head he's probably like, Okay, well, you know, somebody's gonna out all of us or whatever. So he actually said not, to you like, Hey, is Sigfredo trying to extort me for more money? Is he no, he never that? he never that conversation he didn't come he's made about somebody's gonna out all of us. During one of those conversations, there was a comment made about somebody is on the inside, somebody too close. About the, the layers or That's whatever. It, it's That's what somebody you said. That this is getting too detailed. There's somebody on the inside, inside that knows. knows. Somebody on the inside that I'm knows. thinking it's Lewis. Okay. Like he, that, like, Lewis is doing all of this. Like this, that was always my assumption that it was Lewis doing this because maybe he talked to somebody. So you, you, you at this point thought it was the cops. You, you were like, Somebody's. I mean, no. I mean, like I had, I would think that it has something to do with police. You would think Lewis was flipping already. Something, you know, yeah. But you're yes. telling, you're telling Sifredo that. Did you tell Charlie that? Did you ever tell Charlie you think? No, I'm, I'm getting this vibe from Sifredo because Sifredo is freaking out. Right. The only reason why he would be freaking out is because it has to do something with Lewis. Right. Now, this is when I put two and two together that I'm like, okay, like, did he do 
something with Lewis because I'm thinking in my head the whole time that it was, you know, like whoever, me going to Sufredo about it, I would think that Sufredo would go to somebody else about it and the whole time I'm just relaying it to Sufredo but wouldn't be stupid enough for him to really be the one who's doing it. So does that make sense? No? Yeah. You thought Sufredo would be the one in the process. In the process, would, yeah. Like, to be able to get someone to take care of it for you. Yes, basically. Okay, so not you, you would let him know that he has those connections that he could have got somebody to do it. Yeah, not him doing anything. But then he got paid, and he's giving you money, and you're giving the money. I mean, but that has nothing to do with me. He could pay off somebody else. That's and then him getting paid. gave you money, and then y'all you, you met out outside of Lewis's house. So, obviously, at that point, you knew Lewis was involved. He was involved. I think it, I can, if I'm remembering correctly, these guys can correct me. You've said it before, like, Lewis and... Secreto, or they're like this. They're all, they're, they're, always, all, they're always, always together, together, always doing things together. So why would you think one would do something without the other if that's how they are? I mean, he, they hang out with a whole bunch of guys too. Right. But yeah, also, you think that a whole bunch of guys wasn't at Lewis's house. Did Did Secreto make another trip up here? So confusing, huh? Did Secreto make a third trip? Did you know if he made one before the June? Did he come up before June? Not that I can recall, but probably. I don't know how many. It, like he never told me when he would go out of town. Did you ever? That was the thing. Out of being did out of town. Did you ever have to go get more money from Charlie prior to the murder? I did lie about one time about to Charlie. I was with afraid of me and him got back together, yeah. and then that's that that's now that you said out of town it was always out of town. So then that gave me an assumption that it wasn't in Miami. Like I have to get out of town. Anything he was going to do, any type of business or whatever, it's like he's going out of town. So what did you That's, lie about? Oh, I lied to, to Charlie. I lied to Charlie about needing money for, you know, for, for when, yeah, but we ended up taking the kids out, like staying somewhere else. And then that was, yeah. So he lied about taking money for this, but then he, but it was actually for you guys to go on vacation. Or yeah, yeah, like we just like stayed somewhere, mm -hmm. like, you know, rented a hotel or whatever, like with the kids. So it was never like a trip. But did you um, ever get money from him on a different time? This is from Sigfredo? No, from, 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 from Charlie. Charlie for, 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 yeah. for another trip to April trip. or May or anything like that. Because Sigfredo already had money right now. to do any kind of other stuff other than the June trip and then the murder. Was there any other um, time that you asked for money for, for him to do whatever preparations he needed to? Yeah. So, uh, no, I don't know. I'm, okay. not, I'm not certain. That's what they're asking us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking in my head that maybe it has happened, but I'm not for certain, so I don't want to okay. say. Yeah, because the secret has mentioned, you know, times like, hey, I'm going to need money. I need, you know, to to get out of town. Like, he'd always just say, get out of town. Like, when he said that, like, that just triggered, like, a, this is what like something for. that he would say, you know, out of town. I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I just relay it back. So, it might have happened where there's another time before that, okay. but I'm just not certain. I know I lied about that one time about him going out of town, but it wasn't really for that. Like we ended up going out with the kids and just used our money to go out with the kids. Okay. So I'm so I like. You're fine. No, it's not that. It's just that I want to get to the bottom of this right. too. Here's and the thing. Like like you said. Okay, so before you were counting, you were worried about like. Something you remember, you get back and you remember, and you'd be afraid to write it down because people will steal it. Because you're worried about it hindering your case. Okay, your yes, case is this, now. Yeah, when you hear, and after talking to us, if something comes to your mind, whatever, I, I think you guys got, you get stationary and stuff in there, just start writing it down. Um, reach back out to your attorney or, or whichever. And talk to the right. 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 Just don't ever think that there was, because. Because you're going to have a lot of time to think. Like you're gonna but think. It, it's like, I know you guys are kind of getting frustrated about the whole situation of like conversations that like occurred. I don't, there was nothing that like really stuck out that like why would, for that, we wouldn't have never spoken on the phone to begin with. A lot of the conversation was already on the phone. So obviously I was free to want to talk about all of this stuff on the phone because I wasn't really in fear of something happening. I'm feeding off of both of them freaking out. And I'm trying to figure it out with them, but they're not telling me the facts. And this is why the whole thing of like... Like Juana.
had more than enough information to piece together what was going on. It is possible she was stringing Charlie on so he would continue to pay her to keep quiet in spite of her renewed relationship with Garcia. Me cooperating and stuff from the beginning, but I don't really have all the facts. Like right now, I'm back in square one. I don't have the specific facts, but from what I just relate, and now... But you I'm saying like from the beginning, from beginning to end of all this, anything that you think of or you remember is what I'm talking about. Anything that's going to come to mind that, that you didn't think of, because you said you suppressed a lot of it. You suppressed a lot of it, and then you'd go back, and then you're thinking, like, oh, yeah, this happened, oh, yeah, that happened, and you forget it again when it's time to come back up. Those are the thoughts that I'm talking about to, to write down and, and kind of okay. keep note of, because okay. those are things you don't want to risk forgetting them again, and oh, now you remember them. And those are the things you need to reach out to Chris and and when you when you have those, okay. so that way you can, because if it's something that we don't know, something that hasn't already been out here, it's something we haven't already discussed with you, or has been brought up in trial that you know that we have, you've seen everything we've got, okay? We're going to leave here and think of questions we forgot to ask. Sure, it's inevitable. It's going to happen to all of us, so. Yeah, and, and I had a whole bunch of questions that I wanted to ask you guys, too, specifically with mm -hmm. the whole thing, too, like, with, like, I have a lot of questions about Sifredo, but obviously nobody's spoken to Sifredo. I wish I would have just asked these questions, believe me. I, I'm the one who's, at the end of the day, what, where it's like, if I would have just asked questions or if I would have just been, <laughs> you know, like, instead of, like, bullshitting, bullshitting about it around that time, you know, like, I wasn't taking, like, and I'm, that's what I'm telling you, like, I'm looking at it back now, like, yeah, I feel stupid. I feel stupid because the whole time I'm like not asking the same questions and I'm in this, but I'm not really taking it seriously. Like, I'm just like, oh, okay. Like, and it's not something that shouldn't have been taken seriously. Like this right. is obviously it led up to this situation right now, but these are things that like, I want you, you I want you guys to go up to the and ask these questions. Those are the stuff that only he can answer. And then why he was so saying the things that he said. Yeah. I still talk to his mom every. I mean, every now and then. No, but it, that that's the thing. It's like I try to relate. Like you know, that's another, I can't have a conversation with him. Is that like not allowed? <sighs> I don't know how we. That's, that's, that's a sticky wicket. We'll have to look at that. I don't, I don't know how we would accomplish that. I, I know the prisons don't allow you to contact. I know, like not to have prison yeah. in prison, but in yeah. this situation, like we have children together, I don't have communication with him. Like I don't really have that direct communication. I'm having a hard time with my mother-in-law because of the fact that it's like my my family's trying to protect my children and right. that's my number one priority is the protection of my children. So they're not really comfortable yeah. with, you know, the whole thing with Zegredo's mom. Oh, but she tried to see I mean, yeah, but she lives in California now. Yeah, yeah right. she, yeah, this has caused a lot so it's of her issues. So kind of not want to talk and have conversations with I mean, it's just very hard because then it's like I'm again in the middle because it's like I want my children to have their grandparent, but it's like at the same time I'm getting frustrated because it's like I don't want this ongoing thing and anything to mess this yeah. whole situation up where I don't know how much more screwed I could get, but it's you know, like I just didn't want anything to hinder that. Like I said, I know you guys perceive it in all these different ways, and it's like I can't even tell just from your. I, I'm frustrated with myself. I see the frustration, frustration, and I've just I've been through. And I'm not. I don't want. I'm not a complainer. I don't want to complain. Like, oh my God, I've been through all the. Yes, it's been hell in here, and I've had to put away a lot of things. And it's like, yeah, I suppress all of those feelings, and and I want, and I want to help. Like, yes, I want an end to this whole situation, but. There's a lot of questions that I really cannot answer. And it's from what I remember, you know, granted, if I go back in the dorm and I think back about all this convers the conversation, things take out, obviously I'm going to have that legal call with yeah, Tara. Yeah, that's probably a better idea than writing it down. Yeah, just call them. When you think about it, call your lawyers. There's a risk for Magwana to be targeted by other inmates. If they can gain the information before she has the chance to volunteer it herself, they could possibly use it as leverage in their own cases, since this is a high-profile case. And tell them, right, this down before you yeah. get through some of the documents. Something to remember. Because obviously those calls are not recorded and nobody monitors that stuff. 
And if, if from the beginning, I it just, I was not, I never felt, you know, like I was approached in a way where it's like I should have, you know, like this could have all happened. If I was in the beginning saying the same thing that I'm telling you now, you probably would have reacted the same way. Like, well, what were those conversations? Well, the, it's not sticking out to me because it was never anything. Why would I have to talk outside? Like I said, like everything was on the phone calls. Yeah, if you told me to meet or whatever, Charlie just says the same thing all over again of everything he's already probably said on the phone call. It was nothing At what point did, separate. did anybody know that murder was supposed to happen? And that's the, that's the part that I was telling Chris. I don't know when it transitioned from that to like me really finding out that this was, okay, it was a murder that was supposed to be done. Okay. So you don't know when that happened or how that happened? Yeah, like when it transitioned from like, okay, that, that that's what needs to be done. I don't know if I'm just like, I, it's, it's hard obviously to be like, I'm involved in, you know, somebody passing away, somebody being murdered and me facilitating all of this, but you know, like, yeah, I see the role that I played. I see me ping ponging from both parties and stuff, and I, I see it. So, do yeah, you I Charlie, know. do you remember Charlie asking you that it needed to transition to that, like verbally? Was it how did that how did that occur? What over the phone was it? Was it in person? How did Charlie present that to you? I don't know. Like I said, I, this is like through time of him really like getting in my head and just telling that this needs to be done, this needs to be done, but not like, oh, like he needs to, he needs to be killed or whatever, so. How did you tell Sufreya that? How did you transition it to Sufreya? That, that's why I think that that paper had all the information, therefore I never went back and forth to even go and tell, ask Charlie this question or ask Sufreya that question. This is a quick, like, I'm thinking all the paper had directions, um, of who the person was, what needed to be happen, like what needed to happen, and that's that paper that I wish I had. And you saying that he was trying to show me that he had never. I didn't say he tried to show you. I, I said he had it. That he, did he show that it? He should, he should, no, he should never show it. Maguana is pinning her hopes on a piece of paper that no longer exists. Even if it did, it wouldn't mean that she hadn't known what it contained. Yeah, he's never showed it to me, even in the car, nothing. That, I mean, a, this is the point that I would be like, yeah, he showed me that paper. Like, what I've got to lose? There's not something that I would want to keep. That's pretty well. You said early on that you did, but it's a pretty no, significant event. That he didn't. That he didn't. Right. I'm saying, yeah. Again. It's a pretty significant event for somebody to, to go from beating somebody up to, to murdering, and you don't remember any of that transition process. It's just not... Coming up in your head and how it happens. Yeah, like I, I don't. Like I, I mean, that doesn't be exact. I, I know I'm not. Just, yeah, but that, that's what I was trying to tell with Chris as well. Like, when did it get from point A to point B to this point, and then now that that whole part is just like, it's like it's a blur to me. But I don't, I don't know when Charlie said those specific words, or even you know coming sure that was said. You just can't remember when? No. And you can't remember how you talked to Sufredo about it at all? How you went to Sufredo and say, this needs to be a murder, not... But that's what I'm saying, like, he knew probably what it was for, and obviously Charlie knew. But I was, ne I was never in the known because I think from that paper, from the beginning, it was already said there. But like, they're not telling the me... Paper. Okay. Anything. Therefore, I don't know when it transpired. And, and um, so you're thinking that the instructions, everything was in the paper, all the communication that you just knew that Charlie wanted someone taken care of. You're understanding that, that, that he wanted someone beat up. You told him you had somebody. Be, yeah, like or hurt. Yeah, somebody yes, hurt. hurt. Somebody yeah. hurt. Her. That's a really significant ask to put on a piece of paper for you to give to somebody that he doesn't even know. I don't even know is. why the hell Charlie ever even came up to me. I th I think about that all the time. Like, who comes up to somebody that right. they just met? It's like, how much does he know? Did he know who Zipredo really was? Did you not tell him about Zipredo? I mean, I'm pretty sure that he was, that? you know, like every time yes. that. I, did you think about your ex, about your baby daddy, about things? I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure yeah, I'm pretty sure that mentioned yeah. stuff like that, yeah. and that's why I feel like he knew yes. more. Yeah, you keep going. I feel like he knew more than what he led me to know. 
He did, you know, like he right. you, you felt like he knew that you had that already. connection. That's why yes. he kept talking. Why did he come up to me? You know, the guy asked my question about all the other people. Why would he just come up to you? Like, mm -hmm. It is possible that one way or another, Charlie became aware of the connection that Magwana had with Garcia and how that could be useful. Right. And somebody that you're dating, what? But then now, I so you think it was a calculated thing for him? In your mind, I feel like everything has been calculated with with. You think all everything the time. with him? The reason he started dropping those hints to you and bringing that up to you is because he knew that you had the connections to make it. He knew who, like, who he knew who I was with, and maybe who he hung out. Like, I don't know. I don't okay. know to what extent. Obviously, I know you don't know for sure, but that's in your mind. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's why he came to you. That's yeah. why he came to you because he knew you had that connection with Sick Fredo and the kind of. People that say, right? It just doesn't make sense. Like that's the part that doesn't make sense. How do you feel so comfortable? Like you would never feel. And then that was like, did you do anything to make him feel comfortable with it? No. Other than, other than you. I mean, obviously I mean, you told what, him you had somebody. What makes sense is you telling him who's he lives and telling him you had somebody that could do this and him trusting in you. It's like he's that's trusting, why he's trusting you because he trusts you. Yeah. I mean. It's okay if you told him about somebody, or you told him you had somebody that could do this, or you told him these things. It's okay. You're not going to No, I did. That's what, that is what I said. Okay, like, yeah, I have somebody for you. That's that's what was the conversation in the car, but like, it never even really went. Like I think it was a while before. Well, yeah, October, so time. the Halloween thing is when you said, you said that's the part you remember when you told him you had Yeah, somebody. it was like a while and for him to even a like. A couple months. Something, what, yeah, for, for anything to even happen. But I'm saying, like, even the initial thing, why is it why that I was approached? Yeah. And why is it that me? And why would you trust me? I could have easily, from the get, mm -hmm. been like, this guy's crazy. He's trying to make me, you know, like, get somebody else for it. And it's like, I could have flipped on him. Right. Was well, it something you had been saying to him? Have you been talking to Fredo up or talking about some of your past? It was too early people? on. And all I could remember, I, all I could think that I would have told him is that like, you know how, how the, the stuff that I was going through with Fredo as far as like relationship wise. You'd be venting about like, him, yeah. about all the frustrations you have, him not having money, him doing drugs. Him. It was a lot of things now that I think about it with the money situation, he knows that we were struggling. He knew, he knew that I, you know, like obviously and he's that he has and no, no and job. Yeah. No, 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 I'm saying that to create where I have no job, okay. I'm having a hard time, this is why I'm picking up jobs here, there, whatever, and then working in the office, but um, a part of that is because he knew financially, like, you know, I, I'm a single mom, mm -hmm. I just, well, I've been with a creator for a long time, like, I've been with him since I was 18 years old, so it's just like, it, it's, our relationship has taken a change since we moved back down to Miami, obviously after having two kids and stuff. And it was like, it got to the point where I got frustrated and that was over, but then I still kept up and I still like, you know, like he was still in my life. Obviously he's fired. But I think about it all the time. It's like, he has to have known way more than he's presuming. If he's trusting me enough to even think this and then I'm relaying it to Zafredo, obviously Zafredo is gonna trust me, but then there's always yeah, some trust there because you did it. It happened. You didn't tell anybody. You guys thought you got away with it for a couple of years. So obviously the trust was there. The trust was built there for it. So the trust is, is there. Somehow there was something done to make him trust you for that. And obviously he trusted you because you did it. You didn't call the police to set him up. You didn't call to report that this guy's trying to harm somebody, trying to get me to hire someone. We have worked cases many times before where they have called like hey this person's a little crazy i think they're actually gonna do it you might want to get on this and we've done it so there was that trust that time, there. i already involved the creator like yeah but you put trust in you I you told charlie, charlie that you had somebody to do it somehow you did something to make him trust you to be able to have you do this Memory, you know, that's, what that's what I'm saying. I don't know why. How? Why he would have trusted me? That's that's why I feel. Well, do you think that he's? I feel like yeah. yeah there's there's got to be something. When you guys were talking about some topics you were on. Somehow something with your connection that you guys had during your. You said y'all just met because y'all just started talking mm -hmm. when he started dropping these hints. Obviously. But he's something been, in your interactions has made him want to trust you. Okay, but him commenting that wasn't it from the past that before about him hiring like a hitman? Wasn't that a joke, an ongoing joke he's had from before? So what does he just go to different people at a time and ask them these things? Like that's the. I don't know. 
A joke could have been a tool to feel people out and see who reacted as if they might be capable of following through with murder. It could also serve the purpose of lowering suspicion of there being any sinister intent behind an offhand comment. It is a dangerous bluff, and in the end, it didn't pay off. Because he said this comment before he ever even knew right. of me or, or me. Right, so he said this comment before to other people, all these other things. The only so time it actually looking. took half he's been looking and then so it took him finding you. conversation go with you that came around. That's the conversations over time that is helpful to us. Is she ready for her? Yeah, you got to uh, read. You got anything specific? Just get up and let her know. Uh, um. Okay. Think about the things that we've asked you, like the specific time frames and, and like all the stuff that we don't have on recording. That's what we were, we're wanting. We need. Oh, believe me, I know. I'm going to have to. That's the stuff you just need to think about yeah. and then reach out to your attorneys. You have, you have sent some things. You have answered some questions. It hasn't been completely useless. So there's, and, and, and some of it is, I understand the context of a lot of it, and, and they do as well. I mean, but like the whole time um, I... I'll tell you, the three of us have done a lot of these. Yeah. And there's times where what I really think you're struggling with is just saying it. Is just saying... And you'll say, yeah, I was stupid. Yeah, I did this. Or, yeah. But just to say, this is the part that I did. And this is when I did this. And this that's where you're struggling. And take time. Don't let us put it in your mouth. All right? That's what we don't want. We want it to come straight from you. Oh, I, yeah, obviously, I, I get that. Yeah. And maybe, I don't know if we come back down here, I don't know where they're going to put you, I don't know if we end up bringing you back to Tallahassee, but eventually I'm sure we'll sit down again. So. Okay, so in his trial, like, would that be, like... Yeah, you're going to have to come. Like, I'd be called again oh. for... <laughs> yeah. You would, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. And how does that work? Because I've always said in the, you know... Even with my testimony, but like that, like you how does that just tell the truth? Hey, I lied before. I was trying to protect you myself. You saw you. exactly what your attorneys did to Lewis. You can prepare yourself. It is, it, but it's going to be the similar. You're going to be treated very similar to what your attorneys did to Lewis. I mean, they are going to try to tear you apart. That's what they're going to do with everything that you okay. say. The important thing is, if you're telling the truth then you won't have a problem with questions. Does that make sense? If you're lying about something, somebody asks you something, yeah. you can get tripped up easily because yeah. you're lying about it. But if you're telling the truth about what really happened, that like, truth will stick to your memory and yeah. you will, you'll be fine. And, and the whole thing too, it's like, you know, you guys keep saying like, I have like, like a pot of gold and do you guys not, I mean, you guys have heard my conversation, you see my comments there, right? like I have, there's no, I'm, like I could have, Flipped on Charlie from the get, from the beginning, and it's like he's not supporting anything. Then why I, didn't you trip? Why didn't you flip on him from the beginning? Because the whole point of it too is move first to cradle. I don't know why. Like I, in my assumption, like I said, like I was never approached in that way. Like I never. You mean like a tooth review, like a, not like even a deal like that, but it's just like I just never felt. Like, <laughs> Jimmy, and nobody's ever going to feel comfortable about it, but it's like to even be to the point where it's like th these are like the answers that I had. Were you trying to like also like not want to do anything that would hurt? That would hurt, sick, of course. So that's that's kind of the reason why you didn't is because you didn't want to really hurt him too. Yeah, he was in the deal, and I, I would have done it right there, right after um my mistrial. Right. So you would have had you come forward. Any information you gave obviously would have hurt sick right now. And, that, and that's why this so was to nothing to, to protect Charlie. Nothing to, I ne it, never. No, it was just to protect never, Sigfredo exactly. because you knew that what you're telling us here and what we know is would be detrimental to Sigfredo. Exactly. Okay, so that's I, mean, I had my best trial, and then he was going to be, I mean, like, for my assumption, it was going to be an appeal. So, like, for me to even, like, I wanted to speak to him because it's like, this is the time now, an opportunity for us to finally get this over with. I don't want to go back to trial. I don't want to do that all over again. This is not just a trial where it's like, I'm not on the media. Like, my, like, that was a constant conversation in that jail. Mm -hmm. And it's like, even leading up to that trial, like, <laughs> it, by the time you saw how it was, by that trial, I was... I was done. I was deflated. I was tired. Right. I was in confinement in and out, red and whites, and putting in suicide watch. Like, I was going through it. 
yeah. in jail before I was even going to trial. Before the trial even started, I was exhausted already. I wanted it to be over with. That's why I wanted it. I was like, you heard my conversation with Sifredo. I don't know. That was one of, like, I was begging. I was like, like, what? Like, what? Else? Like, why? Like, why are we, like, why well, don't want to go to trial? Right. Like, that's it. Let's talk. Like, I say what I know. You say what you know. And, like, this is way more than, you know, like, this is nothing protecting Charlie or whatever. I'm clearly not getting any type of money. Like, my, I'm, my family's tapped out with everything. That's another thing, too, with the attorney. Magwana has no intention of shielding Charlie, and after the years in prison she has endured, she most certainly holds him responsible for her situation. If there is any damage she can possibly do at his trial, she has more than enough incentive. My family is in debt because of me having to go to trial again, and yet people didn't want to let that go. It was like, oh, that he's still a part of it, and I get it. It's like the story and the... How did you get the cost? How did you, how did you first get the cost? The cost of what? The cost. Chris. 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 How did you get Chris as an attorney? Oh, I was, Tara and Chris came to me that, the first time that I met him through, um, that day that I was in Broward. That How did the they come to time. you? Why did they come to you? Because of Charlie, right? No. The How cost. did they come to you? Yeah. No, he was, Tara's always done cases with Chris. And so did you hire Tara before that? I hired Tara. How did you get Tara Tara? Like, how did you know to hire Tara? Like, did someone refer her to you, or what? I don't even remember how I got Tara. Well, did you know Charlie's attorney is, is in the same office? I knew that, no, that Chris was in the same office. Yeah, he told me that after, but I didn't know that he was in that same office. I didn't know that, no. Yeah. All right, thank you My attorney Laura. was Tara, and then okay. she Tara brought Chris. Chris in. Yes. Okay. Okay. Think hard about everything. Talk to your attorneys. Your attorney, whichever one you're talking to. Yeah. Um, and we'll I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like. This is the R and L process over here, so I don't even know if I'm going to. Yeah, be we don't know where you're going to be. Yeah, yeah, you may have to find out. Yeah, find out. You got three other places you can do that. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't want to get us in trouble too. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna take that. Back. Do we all yeah. go at the same time? Hang on, just wait till she comes and gets you. Would it be possible for me to contact my attorney now? That's not up to us. Yeah, that's up to them. Okay, they make those decisions. After her retrial, Catherine Megwana was found guilty of first degree murder, conspiracy, and solicitation to commit murder. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, along with two additional sentences of 30 years. And that's the end of today's video. If you liked what you watched and want to support the channel, hit the like button and check out my Patreon link in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.